Welcome to the Monday, August 13th, 2018 meeting of the Green Bay Planning Commission. First item, roll call. Uh, Commissioner Gilbert Chair, present. Sydney Bremer, present. Alder Veronica Corpus Dax, present. Uh, Commissioner Lisa Hansen, absent. Excuse. Excuse. Yep, she could not be here tonight. Yes. <coughs> uh, Commissioner Jacob Miller, present. Commissioner Randall Kratowski, will be late. Uh, Commissioner Jerry Wispicki, absent. Next item, approval of the agenda for the August 13th meeting. Is it for this meeting? Um, I'm trying to get my note here so I can see what it was I wanted to say. Uh, the last time when I moved to approve an, an agenda, it was to be amended to include the time staff. I'm now informed by the staff that there's an automatic connection between the items on the agenda and the video records, so the time staff was not necessary. I just wanted to make sure the rest of you were aware of that, too, so I can move approval of these minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. All those in favor? Oh, that was for the agenda. Uh, for the agenda? Oh, sorry. Did you want to move that well, one item up? Yes. I'll, I'll move to the agenda. <laughs> we okay, can do it. Yeah, as I say, trying to get my notes. So we have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, next item, approval of the minutes <laughs> in the July 9th time commission meeting. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That is approved. Next, approval of the minutes from the July 12th special meeting of the County Commission. Move to approve. Second. And we have a motion and a second to approve that, both minutes. Any further discussions? So that's the, uh, that's there are none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? So okay. Those okay. are approved. Next item, public hearings. There are actually two public hearings tonight. And these public hearings have been properly posted and public notification has been published in the Green Bay Press Gazette. The Planning Commission is interested in hearing public comments on the subject of, on the subject agenda items. We invite your comments and ask that after your name has been called, you state your address, whether you represent a group or association, whether you favor, oppose, or are only providing information in this matter, and your comments and concerns. We also ask that you confine your testimony to facts related to the proposal at hand and avoid repetitive testimony. You must be recognized by the Planning Commission in order to speak, and please address your comments to the Chair. Comments will be limited to five minutes. And keep in mind uh, that these items will also be heard after the public hearings, will also be heard as regular business items, and at which time the uh, Planning Commission will probably take some sort of action. So you will be able to hear that again. We will now open the public hearing on number one, a request to amend the City of Green Bay Smart Growth 2022 Comprehensive Plan to revise the future land use designation for properties located in the 3400 to 3500 block of East Mason Street <coughs> from commercial to business park. Submitted by John Leroy Mall and Associates on behalf of Sahara Imperial Group LLC and GNH Properties LLP. Is there anybody that wishes to speak on this matter? Yes, sir. Would you step up to the podium? And Get your name and address. Uh, my name is James Hennessy. I live at 634 Fairway Lane, which is off of Finger Road, which will be Finger Road butts up to this property. Uh, my first concern is the noise and the traffic and the from the trucks that would be in this proposed facility. We already have a big facility off of Mason Street that has hundreds of trucks. In the middle of the night, my neighbor Jerry was next to me. We can hear him constantly. Like last night, Sunday night into Monday morning is the worst because the truckers are on the road. 3.30 in the morning, do, 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 and it comes down. 
and now you want to build a facility that's with a thousand feet closer to us at least that's number one number two the your own committee your own staff members have said not to do this because it'll vastly have a negative effect on all the residents that live there if you look at the map you have residents right here you have residents here and this is going to butt 50 feet behind these people on Finger Road and 100 feet from the people off of here. These people are never going to get any sleep at night, nor or less the lights and everything else. And I read the proposal from the company. Well, we might put some trees in. Well, trees aren't going to help you with the noise. So my overall take is we have enough stuff out there. I've been living in my house for 33 years. Other people are living there longer. One of the main reasons we went out there because we don't want to live in the middle of the city with all the noise. And this city has built an industrial park around us. They put us in the middle of an industrial park without our knowledge, without our okay, just because it's money. That's great, it's money. You may go ahead with this, you may not. But we've had enough of it out there. This should be either residential or it should be like a strip mall, something that at 10 o'clock at night is closed down so people can get sleep. The existing warehouse out there, they never should have let it go 24 hours even. From 11 to 7, they shouldn't have any noise out there. But that's the way it is. Um, and I was a little disappointed that the cutoff for the first district, I actually live in the first district because the cutoff is Mason Street. And I was a little upset that Barbara Dorf, who's our representative, wasn't informed on this carbon copy or even here at this meeting she should be involved because it affects residents in her district also thank you for listening thank you would anybody else like to speak on this matter yes sir oh go ahead <laughs> good evening um, my name is John Stadler and I do reside and own uh, two current properties on Finger Road and I live there as well and I've owned uh, other properties on that road as well um, we all struggle as residents to ask ourselves we'd want that in our backyard and as you as residents and members of the committee you could probably answer that question with a resounding no that you wouldn't want it for a backyard neighbor uh, we don't feel that it adds to our residential property value or improves the residents value in that area and uh, it may increase the city's effective use of that property and tax income um, and possibly some considerations can be made for those surrounding residents to have an offset in their property situation tax wise if in fact the greater role on the city is much higher for a rather large uh, property to go in there as it's rezoned i would also ask that you consider the layout of the phases um, one in moving the pond to the east which we discussed in the prior meeting relevant to its buffering the residences on the east secondly I would ask that you look at the residential berm and maybe the buffer of water goes around that to further isolate the uh, residences to the business property and then thirdly if it were to go through um, I would ask that you strongly consider moving phase one to the west in essence building phase one so that it sits behind a property to the north um, that has nothing developed in it but is part of the more industrial zoning and also if phases two three and four come later then they would further get closer to residential property right now phase one is abutting the residential property and rental properties along the east so a flip of phase one two three and four may be one way to lessen the blow on residences so thank you for that and hopefully that gets considered as well thank you Is there anybody else that wishes to speak on this? Does anybody else wish to speak on this matter? Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Hearing none, this hearing is concluded. The next public hearing is a request to amend the City of Green Bay Smart Growth 2022 Comprehensive Plan for properties located in the 1600 block of West Mason Street from low density housing to commercial land use submitted by Mark Johnson, DRM Incorporated. 
Is there anybody that wishes to speak on this matter? Yes, sir. My name is Don Kuczykowski. I live at 819 Mitchell Street. And I am totally against this because this is only uh, one in street for about 75 houses, including the fire department, which uses that a lot. If they decide to put this Arby's into this area where they're prospecting it to go, it's going to be traffic up the butt to try and get out of that one one street. Now, there's several properties that are that they could build on in a neighborhood there. They could buy out that cash store right next to where Arby's is now. They would have that whole corner just like uh, McDonald's has down farther on Shano Street. And that would give them plenty of room and they wouldn't bother anybody. They'd still have their ins and outs. And also there's room across the street where like North Shore Bank and them built, if they went across the Mitchell Street on the other side and were Toys and Us parking lot, there's plenty of room to build an Arby's in there also. But mainly I said it's for uh, the traffic that's going to be in that one way in and out for all the cars that do now. And if you have Arby's in there, it's going to be, I don't know, maybe triple, maybe even quadruple the traffic that's going to be coming up that little area and people trying to get out. So that is my one comment. Another is it's going to bother all the people that have been living there for maybe 60 years like I have on that street. And uh, I said we moved there too early years ago because it was a nice quiet little area. So it's slowly trying to edge us out. And now this is another affront to that street there. So hopefully they'll take this in consideration about not trying to block everything into that one street. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak on this matter? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm Michelle Van Dyke, and I reside in Johnson Creek, but I own the rentals on Mason Street and Mitchell Corner. Um, <clears throat> I currently own the duplex on Mitchell Street by the light, and I also own the two little houses that are on Mason Street. Um, I'm in favor of this. It's very difficult for my tenants to get in and out of Mason Street. Um, the traffic is very heavy, so that's why we decided to move forward with this um, um, zoning and, and to go move forward. Um, I don't feel that it would affect the Mitchell Street um, as much as it affects the Mason Street side of it. So, um, and I know that the farmhouse is on the other side right across from the current Arby's now. So. I'm for it because I feel that it's going to be a better serving um, to have a restaurant there than for my tenants at this point. So thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak? Yes, ma'am. My name is Mary Mathais. I lived at 801 Mitchell. We've lived there for 42 years. Um, I'd like you to keep in mind that we have an elementary school bus, middle school bus, high school bus, Head Start bus, disability bus that all come up Mitchell. We have a fire engine that's running at least one an hour every through and the, and the rescue squads. If they put this Arby's where it is, that is going to block that corner where the bus stop is. So you're going to have buses parked there to pick children up. You're going to have people trying to get in and out of Arby's. Um, the noise, the lights, we've got people that can't read signs, so they take Mitchell to try to get out and go to Broadway Chevy. I've had trucks bring semis of cars up there and try to back up because there's no turnaround. They're too big. Um, I just think this is a real bad fit for our neighborhood. 
There's a lot of children. Um, it's just not good. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Yes, ma'am. To start off with, I've never been to one of these meetings, <laughs> and I live at 715 Mitchell. My name is Gail Hibbert. So where you're going to put the Arby's is going to be right in my backyard. And I agree with everything they had to say about the traffic and all that stuff, and I don't understand. What I want to know is if you're going to put, you guys are going to make the decision to start with, whether the Arby's goes there or not, no matter what we say. So. I want to know how high the fence is going to be in case you guys decide the Arby's can go there because that's going to be my backyard. And the traffic there, they're right. You guys are talking about coming in on Irvington, going out on Irvington. You're still going to have the traffic running around there. And if they come in on Mitchell and go out on Mitchell, you're still going to have the traffic going around the Arby's. And if they offer the same amount of money for the people at the corner where the Arby's is now, maybe they'll sell that little place on the corner and Arby's can just make a bigger one there. And like I asked at the last meeting, if you have to move this little Arby's to make a bigger Arby's, is the food going to be any better than it was at the little Arby's? Because <laughs> every time I go by that little Arby's, there's hardly anybody there to start with. Tonight we came by there, there was one going through the drive through and one in the parking lot. And if making a bigger building and your food isn't any better or anything else, there's no sense in putting a bigger building there. And the noise alone, like one lady told me, you're going to wake up to the menu sign. Because my windows are right there. And the other one said the, the noise. Yeah, the noise. And when we asked them about the, the school buses, the last <coughs> meeting they had, it was, well, we don't open till 10. Well, the kids have to come home from school. They don't close till 10 or 11. And they come home around mealtime, 3, 4, 5 in the afternoon. <coughs> So you're going to have all that traffic while these kids are getting off the buses and whatever else. And what the rest of them said, I totally agree with the noise alone. And my bedroom, right there, and I'm going to be able to look at their menu. And they don't have a breakfast menu to start with. <laughs> so there's no sense in looking at their menu. And as far as the lighting goes, when we asked about the lighting at the last meeting, it's like, well, we have these lights that aren't real. No, lights are lights. And if you're that close to the building, it doesn't matter what your lighting is. So don't build next to my little house. We've been in town here for 12 years, and I purposely moved here because of my husband's condition. And I don't need all the noise that Arby's with the cars going through and all that stuff going through there. And if they just, if you guys decide to let them build it there, make sure the fence is high enough so I don't have to look at the menu in the morning and that the noise is down. That's what I got to say. That's just me. Thank you. You're welcome. And is there anybody else that would like to speak on this matter? Or anybody else? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes. <coughs> My name is Candace Cole. I reside at 1653 Birch Street. Um, actually, Mary, if you could raise your hand. Um, my grandmother was the original owner of Mary's house, and Mary is the second owner. Um, my mother, who's 83, uh, lives down the street from me, and she has been there 62 years. Um, I was born and raised in that neighborhood, went off to college, moved away, came back. I'm a school teacher with the city of Green Bay public schools and I chose this neighborhood because it was one of the few remaining neighborhoods <coughs> in this city that have the original <coughs> charm and um, people who really care about each other and are willing to um, help people out. As a Green Bay Area public school teacher, I know that our population in Green Bay is vastly changing. Howard Suomico, um, East of Pier, West of Pier, Eshwabanon, well, maybe not Eshwabanon, but all of those outlying areas, we are losing valuable families.
to go to prettier, quieter, nicer neighborhoods. And this is your chance to maintain a neighborhood that has been for generations. If you looked around our neighborhood, you know, there's children moved back into that neighborhood as adults. I mean, we still know everybody by first name. We look out for each other. And you're going to be ruining one of the few last wonderful neighborhoods in this city. And what's going to come in then are people who are transient, people who don't care, people who, you know, obviously love Arby's and want to, you know, have Arby's right in their backyard. So um, the, the Arby's would actually be right in my grandmother's backyard. And, you know, I have very fond memories growing up of this little seclusive neighborhood that property values aren't even that great anymore. Probably the most expensive house in the entire neighborhood is what, maybe $130,000. So you have people that have lived their entire life, worked their entire adult life, and now are retired there, and they're gonna put up with an <coughs> Arby's right across from the corner where children catch the bus every day. It's a shame, and if you allow, you know, this to happen, it's shameful on you that you have basically killed one of the finest quality neighborhoods in this city. And I have been trying to get out of that neighborhood the day after a Packer game is horrendous because the street lights are reconfigured during the Packer game and then they're supposed to be reset and they are not always reset. And in order to reset them, you have to call down here and you have to get the head of um, the Green Bay Streets or engineering and he, they have to send somebody out to reset them. So sometimes it's by Wednesday. So if you can imagine every Packer home game, if it's on a <coughs> Sunday, you have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, <coughs> Wednesday, where if you count the length of time that it takes for the light to change to get out, it's sometimes seven minutes before that light will change. And what happens is people trying to get out of that neighborhood are ending up running the lights because they think the light is broken because you should not have to wait seven minutes to get out of your neighborhood. Okay. And the same thing going back into the neighborhood. People are making a left-hand turn onto Mitchell Street <coughs> coming from the east side <coughs> and they, are not, they can't wait for that light. So my mother is 83 years old if she wants to cross Mason Street, if she starts walking, and she's been walking her entire life, she's in better shape than I am, and she cannot get across that street in the amount of time that the light is to change. So it's like seven or eight minute wait, then you get <coughs> less than 60 seconds to cross. So if there's more than one or two cars at that intersection, you are gonna wait an additional seven minutes. So if you can imagine that you can't even get to the Green Bay Plaza in under 15 minutes, which is a couple blocks away, which is right across the street from Arby's currently. That's not acceptable. And now this neighborhood is finally changing over to younger families and lots of young children. It is what you want for your school district and for your tax money, okay? A couple buildings on Mason Street that are being rented out. I've never seen those buildings empty since I was a kid. The, the duplex on the corner, how long has that woman lived there? At least 10 years in the one side of the duplex. So those are not transient duplexes. Those are quality citizens living there. 1615 is empty right now. Hmm. Oh. And 705 has been about 16 years. Oh, and the tan one? Yeah, but perhaps you need to do some updating then. Okay. I don't know. It's It can't be a concern of mine or the people who have lived there over 60 years. I mean, you know, you took a gamble. That's your choice. We didn't choose that. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak on this? Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Jesse Cajal. I live at 724 Arlington Street with my family. Um, we have three children at home. And there's a few things that I wanted to talk to you about today or bring up. 
Um, one is property value and taxes. I know um, as a homeowner, I'm concerned about the what the uh, the property taxes and as far as our home values, if that's going to affect it at all. Um, I'd like to know if what you guys are doing to consider that. And then the other thing is um, traffic flow. So I heard from uh, an, another uh, neighbor, or the person that owns the property next to me, he said that you guys are thinking about blocking off Irvington Street at Mason Street. That's a, that's a proposal for um, to keep traffic flow to come down Irvington Street to go back down 6th you know, to uh, military. Um, I don't think that's a good idea either because that gives us the residents, we're, we're, we're kind of in the same situation as the residents on Mitchell Street where we have one in and out of our street. Um, and in the winter, it's very difficult to get up and down that hill on 6th Street. It's very steep, very icy. The plows don't do a very good job. Um, I couldn't imagine a adding additional traffic from or to Arby's going down that street and having to compete with that. Um, and ha having children at home, it uh, also does affect that as well. The increased traffic that goes down that road. The traffic now comes off of Mason Street, goes right into Arby's. Um, that's, it doesn't affect 99% of the residents that live on Irvington Street. <coughs> Moving this to between Mitchell and Irvington will change that traffic flow significantly. Um, have concerns about all the young kids that are playing and crossing the streets. Um, for the uh, residents on Mitchell Street, as well as the fire and rescue squad, um, that is going to affect them significantly as well because of the, uh, you know, like I said, right now they have one access um, to get in and out of there. And um, the school buses and s some of the other things that we're talking about. Um, that's going to have, have an impact on them. Unless you guys build another access road to get out of uh, Mitchell Street, I don't think that's a good idea. Um, I, already, I already did talk about the ice and snow in the winter. It, it could be challenging with, uh, with that. So I, I'm not sure what you guys have, uh, have come up with. I'm sure you talked about some of these things and um, have some ideas, and I'd be uh, willing to hear them. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wants to speak on this? Yes, sir. <coughs> no, good evening. Tom Mathais. I live at 801 Mitchell Street. And I'm just going to, you know, ditto a lot of things that have been said. Mainly, and it's just mainly a traffic issue. Traffic on Mitchell uh, right now is not that bad, but we get a lot of people come up. They don't read the no outlet sign. They come up, they turn around right in front of our house, head back down again. Like my wife said earlier, there's been trucks full of uh, flatbed full of cars going down to the uh, Broadway, and they got to back all the way back up. And go up. There's, I can't see any way you can put a through street anywhere around another outlet on that cul de sac. Um, during the summer, we get quite a few, a lot of traffic with ball players and everything in the evening going down to the Fireman's Park. During the wintertime, you get a lot of people going down there to do the sledding. We don't need the additional traffic, not let alone uh, all the school buses, the fire department's using it. I mean, it's just going to be a mess. I don't know if you plan on widening Mitchell Street, but right now, if a car parks on both sides, you got one lane in between them. That's it. So I don't know what you're going to do down there, but too much traffic that Arby's would. Uh, I and unlike the other gentleman said, you've got that corner by that cash store off. You got a, uh, a street or across Mason Street on the other side. You got a vacant Toys R Lot, Toys R, Toys R Us store. There's a lot of other places on the other side that can be bought and used. I don't know what Toys R Us are doing. They own the building, but they're not doing anything as far as I know. There's other places in that same area they could be putting that Arby's. 
not to tear up some residential area and screw up uh, uh, a nice area in the, within the city of residence and, and they're nice houses down in there um, but you're just gonna fill it full of traffic that's all I can say too much traffic thank you is there anybody else that would like to speak on this yes I represent the district there. <coughs> I'm not against development in the city of New Bay, but I think the main concern is the, the residents. I've got a lot of calls from the residents that they don't seem like they want to move forward with this type of development in their neighborhood. I'd like to talk to Dr. Bonk, and I don't know if he's spoken already. Or he has a, uh, what the city of Green Bay is really recommending on this. But, uh, I think it, from what we've heard from the residents, uh, they're dead against it. You know, I've had quite a few people that live in the neighborhood. Grant you, I'm not against it. I've my own property just down the street, and, and I know how it is. Sometimes you want to get things done. But I think we've got to take all the accounts, you know, take a look at all the accounts that are presented here. So I, I think the, Dr. Bonk, uh, he might have some good words of knowledge that he could uh, share with us. And I think that might be, a, you know, be very helpful. So I, I would just say that uh, we hear what he has to say, and uh, city staff as well. And, uh, from from the calls I've gotten, a lot of people are not for it. And I'm just I'm going by what they I'm your altar person. I represent the county as well, and, and I've had. Some comments from quite a few different residents that are in that particular area and they're not formed. So that's my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Anybody else? Okay. Um, this public hearing is now closed. Next. Regular business. Item one. Consideration of possible action on the request to amend the City of Green Bay Smurf Growth 2022 Comprehensive Plan from commercial to business parks to permit full storage facility, light industrial, in the 3400 to 3500 block of East Mason Street, submitted by John Leroy, Mauer Associates, on behalf of Sahara Imperial Group, LLC, and GNH Properties, LLP. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is the first public hearing we've had, so this is the action item on the public hearing or actually I don't think the same item that the public hearing was for. Um, this is the north side of East Mason Street in the 34 to 3500 block. Um, you can see the property on the, on the screen. It's two parcels right now, um, roughly bounded by South Huron on the west, um, Chapel View and Friars Path on the east, East Mason on the south, and Finger Road on the north. It's just under 42 acres. It's two, two individual properties um, and uh, has basically two family development on the south side of Finger Road to the north, uh, single family on the other side of Finger Road, on the north side of Finger Road, and a baseball uh, complex, sports complex. Um, you have some multifamily in the northern part of Chapel View, a single family on the southern part of Chapel View and also Friars Path, the I-43, Business Center is on the south side of East Mason. Um, you have a big uh, detention facility there. Uh, there's some uh, entertainment type zoning. Um, and then there's a large uh, warehouse and distribution center. And to the west, uh, fronting Huron Road is a uh, trip center commercial with mainly retail and service businesses. Um, again, this is a comprehensive plan amendment, so it's not approving any site plan or any design. It's just the comprehensive plan, which is what the city um, uses to determine future zoning and future land use. Um, as you can see here, everything that's outlined in red, or everything that's in red, uh, is a commercial recommendation. Uh, business park is the purple, which you can see across the street. So you can see basically you have medium and high density housing sort of to the north and the east of the two subject parcels. Um, commercial to the west. These parcels are actually the furthest uh, commercial 
designation in the comp plan for the East Mason Street corridor, and then it goes to Business Park on the south side of Mason. Um, zoning for the lot is kind of convoluted at this time. So you can see I have the lots outlined in red. On the southern portion, you have rural residential, which is almost a holding zone. It's an agricultural type zone. Um, the light yellow is a single family zone. The uh, I guess salmon color is a very density, so a, a multiple family. And then the uh, green is public. Um, now the reason this zoning, and you can kind of see it running along uh, running along Mason Street is like that is because there are planned unit developments basically running all the way along both sides of Mason at this this location. Um, so in the mid 90s there was a planned unit development, planned commercial development over these two lots um, which designated multiple commercial uses. Um, I believe the language in the planned unit developments was that it'd be commercial that could um, both be compatible with the residential areas um, and the commercial areas on Huron. Uh, have service and retail that could uh, work to um, enhance the neighborhood and support the neighborhood. Um, those were renewed in the early 2000s, um, but expired in 2006 due to lack of any type of development. Um, so the base zoning, which is sort of this mismatch zoning, is what's on there right now. Um, our comprehensive plan, our smart growth plan, has 10 uh, review criteria for any type of um, changes or amendments to our land use plan. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them, but uh, what we found is uh, the proposal to go to a business park uh, designation um, would, be, would not be consistent with five of the ten criteria. Um, and they are all in your staff report, um, so I won't go over those, but um, staff's main concern uh, is basically the scale and intensity that can happen with a manufacturing type use. So the petitioners are, are requesting this property, these two properties, to go to business park designation with a light industrial zoning for 33 acres of the, of the 40 and about eight or nine along Mason would stay commercial. So this is a lot now outlined in yellow and I know all the neighbors have seen it. <laughs> um, but the petitioner is proposing basically for everything in this area to go to the business park light industrial use and then a strip that's about 275 to 300 feet deep along Mason to stay um, probably business park business related retail. Um, now again this is just a comp plan amendment so this plan is not being proposed at this time but as you know the steps would be change the comp plan first, request a rezone that matches the comp plan and then come through and get your site plans approved. Um, so this would be cold, what, what they're showing on this conceptual plan is a cold storage facility um, that would be built in four phases. It would be about 500,000 square feet all told. Um, and it would start on the far east side and slowly build out to the west. Uh, there would be a detention facility on the west. Um, access would be directly across the street from uh, the warehousing in the business park. Um, and you can see the green shows a little bit of buffer there. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to show that. Uh, that is what was shown at the neighborhood meeting. Um, staff kind of believes that uh, Business Park Light Manufacturing is going to be creating a more intensive use and uh, potential for negative impact on the adjacent nearby property owners more than a commercial type use. Um, also, manufacturing land use change um, would not be consistent with any, I'm going to go back here, um, any of the adjacent uses, except for across the street, across Mason Street, which is quite large. Um, we do feel the request is less desirable than a commercial use, which is now being recommended there, uh, primarily because a commercial use has the potential, obviously it could be a big box as a commercial use. Uh, market generally doesn't, nowadays isn't really big box oriented, um, but a small business park or an office park, um, might fit in very well uh, with some retail that could also um, assist the neighborhood. Um, so we do have concerns with that. Um, there was a neighborhood meeting held at the end of June um, by the petitioners and the immediate neighbors. Uh, at that time, a lot of the concerns you heard tonight in public hearing were expressed, um, mainly over noise, activity level, traffic, proximity. Um, 
and then also there was some discussion on the potential negative impact of the values of the homes and the desirability to live there if a industrial use came so close. Uh, we did receive one written uh, concern that came in after the staff report. I'll just read it real quick. Uh, Dear sir, I've always known the property was planned for future commercial development. I believe a huge cold storage facility and heavy semi-truck traffic at all hours will be a problem. I encourage you to consider the two <coughs> modification reserve reverse I'll go back to this picture. Reverse the position of the detention pond from the west to the east, <coughs> creating a buffer. Uh, move the driveway as far west to minimize the semi-traffic noise. Thank you for your consideration. Roger Pirka, 818 Chapel View. Um, so with that all being said, staff is recommending denial of the comp plan change. Thank you. one question for clarification sure. and this is always very complicated for those who haven't been through it before and complicated for us as well we're dealing with the comprehensive plan and currently the plan recommends commercial uses for right. this property and the proposal before us made by the applicant is to change that to industrial uses correct it would change it to a business park designation, and then within the business park, there's subcategories, and one would be a light industrial or light manufacturing. Got it. And the proposed use under that that would come forward with a, with a zoning request that would be separate from this meeting would be a distribution center and cold storage, correct? Uh, well, that is what the petitioner kind of showed. I believe That's what they're what looking to do is be able to market the property after the zoning is changed okay. for that type of use. But under the uh, business park light industrial designation, there's a lot of different uses that are permitted. And perhaps you could fill us in on that. Sure. Um, light industrial in the business park, and I don't have it in front of me, uh, but what it would allow warehousing, light manufacturing. Um, I believe it also allows some office uses with a manufacturing component. Um, I believe some trucking industries are allowed in there. Okay. Um, so not your heavy, you know, factories, but uh, more of the support. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, is there any further discussion among staff? And this would involve expanding the PUD across Mason, though, for the first time, right? Yes, we would. Uh, well, the zone request would come first. So it's a three step process for any development. First, it's a comp plan change. Zoning is based on the comp plan, and then the site plan is a staff review based on the zoning. Okay. So, yeah, the zone change would be to expand the I-43 business park um, to extend up to encompass this property. Okay. So if we okay this, then it would allow the zoning change that would cross over Mason. It would allow the request for the zone change. Yes. Thank you. Uh, just to follow up, uh, Mr. Buck, I pulled up the I-43, the light manufacturing I think is what was proposed in there. Mm -hmm. So anything basically allowed in the office districts, so that mm -hmm. could be here, uh, agricultural landscape, uh, lawn garden services, construction, um, manufacturing, which spans the gamut of dairy products, knitting mills, luggage, um, just like 35, 40 uses mm -hmm. specified in there, transportation, communication, uh, logistics, wholesale trade, uh, different types of services, public administration, there could also be some conditional uses in there, um, but really it's, it's the, you know, the broadest class in terms of what <coughs> would occur there. And I guess being pursued right now and marketed is for the, the cold storage facility. Um, but again, changing this, I mean, opens the door towards that rezoning. Correct. Thank you. Yep. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. So I'd like to move that we open the floor then, if that's appropriate at this time. If anybody has anything to say that hasn't already been said. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's find out. Okay. <laughs> we, have, we have a motion and a second to open the floor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is there anybody that has anything that, to add that hasn't already been discussed? Yes, sir. Heather. <coughs> John Leroy Mountain Associates, Foreign Security Boulevard. Uh, we are working with the property owners who are here tonight. <coughs> Uh, Safari Imperial Group and GH Properties, uh, the two parcels. So, 
why we're here is we're trying to go ahead and secure the opportunity to take advantage of the property itself within, within its relation to the built environment, the Zaire, and the size and topography of these two parcels themselves and how it relates to what you can do here in the city itself. So the goal would be to get the green light to potential users out there uh, that a use like this could work and then knowing later on as far as a rezone that they have to go ahead and see the parameters of a PUD and likely an amended PUD to go ahead and have more parameters added on to it to ensure for the residents uh, further uh, uh, buffers to go ahead and, and allow for this type of use to work there. So, so why this use, why now? This comes back from the 2002 comprehensive plan. And in 2002, a property, 42, you know, 42 acres total when you look at both of uh, these parcels, what were you thinking back then? Big bucks. It was still going at that time. Uh, think back to that, at that era, we still were having the development of the Target stores in Schwab and Bellevue. We were having the development of the West, side, or West Pier and Walmart. Those are either in development or brand new things at that time. So the idea of having a big box in this area, which a large parcel on a brand new constructed East Main Street in this area, could handle truck traffic, can handle car traffic, get you close to the highway, makes a lot of sense back then. But as we all know, 15 years have gone by, and that comprehensive part of it has really changed uh, here in the past few years. Kmart's gone, Sears is gone, Tony Russ is gone, Caput is gone. Who knows how long Yon Yonkers is gone. Yonkers moved from downtown with a brand new store, and now will be gone. Uh, just to show the, you know, how life has changed with this comprehensive plan since then. So when looking at this, for the, the property owners, that big possibility as far as development out here goes, which was bought into back in 2002, something like that, it's gone now. So how can we go ahead and think of different things that uh, the developing team, which uh, includes our commercial, who's asking around for marketing as far as who would be interested in, in the search site, um, what could be done? So with this being an infill site and adjacent to the infrastructure that's there, <coughs> the idea as far as a conceptual plan would be to market towards light manufacturing distribution use. Uh, the drawing and the image that we had was based off of feedback from a few users as far as what they figure for a size and layout as far as a facility right here. So why, why this right here? Well, if we're thinking big box store, we're thinking large building already. That's gonna be a huge building where your intensity in your building is facing down towards East Mason. A user like this would have the same type of, uh, of uses. Truck traffic, a large big box store commercial stores would also have truck traffic. For this right here in this conceptual layout, the traffic would go ahead and enter from East Mason and just have its intensity focused squarely on East Mason Street, not around the whole building. If for whatever reason a big box store wanted to come in, they would like to go ahead and have loading docks in the rear sides of the building as well. This focuses the attention overall to, uh, to East Mason Street. Really uses that infrastructure that is there that we as a public have, have built into. It's less intensity throughout the day. As we're talking commercial, we're talking many, many, many users as far as both individuals who are employees and people using the site itself. This restrains it to the projected amount of users as far as employees. Projected as far as something like this would be about 30 to start up with, around 75 by the time you have a full build out. So, um, the economic impact as far as development of this would go is distribution facilities like this are high in demand. So, you know, unlike the big box store, which is dying, something like a cold store true distribution facility should keep on going for a while. We're going to need to have food here in, in the long term. So, taking advantage of our status as being an agricultural area as whole as North Wisconsin <coughs> and having facilities like this which are close to I-43 and taking advantage of it. This type of uh, product would secure stable jobs that should last for a long time. Estimated annual taxes for a distribution facility alone on uh, a product like this would be around $1 million annually. The estimated total full buildup for a facility like this would be $40 million for assessed value. Uh, commercial generation is still projected for the southern part of the site. Um, as far as a placement of why we put it this way, we want to go ahead and allow for, as the, the, the plan said, where would commercial go ahead and make the most sense right here? 
down below on Mason Street itself, not more into the actual interior of the property itself. Um, not a sprawling, large uh, suburban type of facility, but more like what's happening on South Huron and other areas within the I-43 uh, business park. So with all that said, we do realize the residents are here. They've given some very good feedback as to what, you know, this will be, be impactful onto their properties, understandably. So as we all know, though, this is 40 plus acres. At some point in this infill, development's going to go ahead and happen. So in the past 15 years, this right here is an existing berm that has been created by the property owners to go ahead and make it known that this is a separation of uses between the residential and whatever comes through in the future, be it commercial and big box or something like this. Um, also to note as far as how we have this conceptual layout, we try to go ahead, keep the buildings back as far as setbacks, this drive around here, which we, we put up in the anti have emergency drive, that right there means that the buildings themselves are at least 50 feet off the uh, rear back setback line, and then 100 feet for a setback um, for the line uh, adjacent to the residence to the east. So this is just a conceptual, and this is a comp plan amendment, not the actual site plan, but we recognize that in, if this were to be passed, a rezone has to be done. We're trying to go ahead and put out more of these are the steps that would be taken by an end user to this site right here. Because if we just take the I-43 business park QD alone, that wouldn't have good enough setbacks to go ahead and be causes of the, of the residents who are right there. So whoever comes in here has to take care of that, the setbacks and put in additional landscaping measures, additional noise uh, reducing measures to go ahead and ensure that the people who are already here and existing can get along with a new use. So in, in closing, <coughs> we're requesting a change for about 33 acres or so to go from commercial to business park to allow the property owners to pursue users, to find users <coughs> on this land itself. Um, and just keep in mind, a site like this where it is over 1,000 feet deep and it is 1,700 feet wide does not just come out and exist in Green Bay. We don't have those parcels. <coughs> parcels like that generally go ahead and call for an intensity or a, a building that can go ahead and use it. A type of use like this is something that has its status as far as being across the street from the guy for the business park. To note, in 2013, the city of Green Bay did approach these property owners to go and ask, do you want to be a part of the guy for the business park? It was just viewers, it was just questions, but <coughs> it's no that as far as does it make sense to go ahead and expand it right here? Well, now that time's going on, and it's obvious that commercial, larger uses are going to be less and less a possibility. We feel this possibility right here, as far as changing the town plan, is one that makes sense. Thanks. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? I would. Yes, ma'am. So, am I... Would you come up and can afford Oh, this? sure. I'm not even here for this one, but... Um, <coughs> am I <laughs> correct in understanding that you want to upset all of those families Would for... Would you please address the commission, ma'am? For what? Would you please address the commission? Sure. So, he wants to um, change people's lives to build a business that is going to be vacant so that they can find customers. So he's getting, he's trying to have people buy into a plan, which is right now, they don't even have somebody to fill that. Is that is that the correct understanding? Well, at this time, we're just looking to amend the comp plan to yeah. allow for such a business. Nothing definite. No okay, because in the, my second point was, um, he mentioned all of the big box stores that have gone out. Um, perhaps one of those sites that are not in a residential or budding right up to residential families might be a better option for him until he actually finds somebody to build the business that he wants to build. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Is there anybody else? Yes, sir. Good evening. Um, Todd Feather, I live on Finger Road. 
a couple issues. Bought that place 16 years ago. Intentions were behind us. There was Tanner Trail alongside of me that we're going to enter there as a light residential commercial. I have no clue what goes under light commercial. Big traffic symbols. I have no idea what the city's looking for. Um, with that said, when I went to the first meeting, that was cold storage, meaning beer or pizza. So they're running 24 7 semis. Noise we already have from across the street is incredibly beep beep on that mountain. I would like to see as you move the baseball park initially, you move that entrance down towards my place, and that traffic on that road is tremendously terrible. People actually have to go around to get out. On the, here on the road. So with that said, can you keep the business, the heavy commercial, on the south side of Mason? There is plenty of land to be developed there. This is more residential area. Uh, it's going. To, it's going to be, I believe, 90 feet off of my property. They said they want to keep the front of this for more profit for the landowners build small shops to cover up this big box. But I live behind it, what do I see? Nothing to cover up. Yes, some trees, but that's not gonna stop noise. It's not gonna stop the horns blowing. So my request is find some other place for the, this big box company, South of Mason. There's plenty of property. Thank you. Hopefully not too long. Thank you. <coughs> My name is John Gregg. I live on Ontario Road. I used to own a small business on the far uh, east corner called the it was a Shell Station. It's now Quick Trip. I let so many people were my customers, and uh, I hope Quick Trip's doing well for you too. So there's a little. I think there's some misunderstanding between our first meeting that they had and what went on tonight. Uh, can I address this part of it? Sure. I'm part owner with a couple other people on 20 of the acres, and then there's a, the other owner is here tonight that owns the 22 basically on the east side. We're trying to combine this, first of all, because there is no other large acreage in the business park in Green on the side of town, which somebody just spoke about that. There's nothing that large around. And it, everything on this side is business park. Um, Walmart, of course, owns it over on this side. They have not had anything go on there for since 2003, I think, is when they bought it. They had a one-year PUD, uh, real uh, commercial real estate overlay, which expired in one year, just like we had on ours right away, our 20 acres. Since we bought that, we have not had one commercial business go interest any more than just asking about it. The, the, if you watch the factors, the job uh, factors in the United States, I'm sure you can break it down. Somebody in Green Bay has to have their own factors. The percentage of retail right now is lower than every other job factor out there. There's health, there's re uh, health and, and warehousing. There's about seven different categories. Realist, I mean, the commercial is a uh, retail commercial is the lowest factor, growth factor out there. We are hoping this is not what we recommended for more money. We were asked by the city if it ever got changed that at least allow this to satisfy the local customers with the pizza joint or the commercial or the uh, drugstore. We did, I take that back. We had one interest in this corner so far from a drugstore. But they were waiting, hence a well-known, they're wa waiting for growth. They count houses, rooftops, they, and they needed 20,000 in order to come out here. We're getting close, we're getting close. And the other arm, speaking for him also, we would allow this as retail. Not necessarily for just profit, but to satisfy our, our, cus our people out there too, our local residents. Um, we offered to increase the widths, the right-of-ways. Uh, 
uh, not right away, excuse me. The uh, allowances between the back of the building, side of the building, increase the berm size. Um, we're over what normally is standard size for commercial buildings, or in this case, a warehouse type facility. There is, I, I worked out there for 14 years also, and I worked many late nights. There is no peeping or beeping of horns from semis because they only make one stop at the corner and then go up to I-43. So they're not blowing their horns all night long. <coughs> Traffic-wise, if, if, we if we are forced, we can't put single residential in there, R1. There's just no way anybody could afford to put sewer, water, and roads in there and, and, and make any kind of a profit. You got to make a profit on this thing, otherwise it isn't going to work. If we did, or if we had to go to medium to high density residential apartment complexes, there are apartments up here on this corner already. Most of these are resident, I mean uh, duplexes here. But if we had to go to that, we would end up, and you can talk to city also, there would be exits, entrance and exit ways off of Finger Road for those. Also off of this road right here, which is Friars Lane, would be connected through here. So there would be more traffic flooding the residential areas than would be as if you went with a, something like this. Because this will be the only ingress, uh, ingress into and out of this type of building. There would be none up here. Maybe one for a little piece here, but these are going to be retailed probably anyway. So that there is a misunderstanding of this. I believe that this would be a better fix for the for the residentials that are here, because if you go if it goes any other way, there's going to be more traffic flow. There's just is. And we're also, like I said, we're going to probably be able to get some some neighborhood usage residential. I mean, commercial down here, commercial retail. The stuff that you have to go down to Main Street to find. And that's about all I've got, unless somebody has a question about anything. But I at have least. Oh, oh, so, what would the map? Oh, do I have to go up? Oh, she's asking, I'm sorry. At least the one thing I would ask of, of, of the uh, commissioner we don't have that cold storage place on board. We need a conceptual design to go back and the, and the possibility of a, of a one year leeway to try and find something similar to this. It may not be cold storage. It may be a, a normal warehousing type project. But the other thing is, like I said, all the semi-traffic will be pulling into loading docks on the Mason Street side. You're not going to have them flashing around. This is just an emergency road, more or less for, for maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> Nothing is going back here for loading docks or on the side. It's all going to be here. All the headlights are going to come in here and go <coughs> up here. And like I said, I was I lived in that in that station for many nights, and there was no no blowing of the horns. It was they stop at the stop sign, and continue down to I-43, which is what East Mason was made for. This is an arterial road. It's it's an identical arterial road that West Mason was on the west side of town. That's off of 41. This is off of uh, in ingress and egress to go to 43. It is made for that type of stuff. I agree. In the beginning, as you can see, the, your forefathers basically allowed some single residents in here. They also allowed some duplexes in the same thing, and they also allowed some uh, con uh, condos, condos in uh, apartment buildings. Now, that to me is quite a mixed bag. And it, like I said, we don't want to do that, but in order to, to at least, if nothing else, we know we're not going to be able to fill this whole thing with commercial. If we do, there's going to be, and I don't know who said it, but if we, if we put a Walmart size uh, retail commercial building in here, they're way more intrusive than this thing would be. They're open 24-7. Their uh, loading docks are usually on the back side and the side of the things. The, their employee parking's on the back side and the side. 
you got your customers 24 7. This thing is less intrusive than any kind of commercial box up here. And again, it, it, we're not trying to do anything to my neighborhood. You guys are my neighborhood also. I'm close. But uh, there's not a whole lot of other things you can do with the thing. There will never be single residential there. No matter if we sell it to somebody else or we keep it, it's just not going to be that way. You can't do it anymore. <coughs> so like I said, if nothing else, at least give us a chance to, to have a one year possibly overlay on this thing uh, to see if we can get what we can get in there. It doesn't mean we'll get it. We have to come back through here. We've got to have neighborhood meetings again. But give us a chance to, to, to find out what's out there. I know working with the city from before, there's a lot of, a lot of people that come into the city and say business like and say, what do you got in something 25, 35, 40 acres? Well, there's an, an, you can speak to it. You, there isn't much left in this park, in the, in the, in the Packer or the, or the I-43 business park. Maybe we'll get something even less intrusive, but this isn't that bad. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else wishes to speak? Yeah, I got something, please. Um, My name is Rick Hazley. Yes. And I live on 3490 Friars Path, and he's talking about there's no beeping or clanging or noise. Wow, that's an opinion. But. Again, I, I agree. But I live on the end over here, and we've got the big warehousing on the, on the other side of the street, which is 24-7. When somebody's back up, they're constantly beeping. Mm -hmm. they got the shuttle drivers out there that are constantly backing up. They're dropping the dock doors. Now they're building another warehouse right across the street for Nature's Way. So there's another one that's going to be making noise, and now they're going to have that one there. Sure, back here they might have it, because they're going to have the big back of the building back there. But over here, I hear that crap all night long. And you can't even have your windows open. And now they're going to have another warehouse here, another one there. I beg to differ with you, sir, so that's just, just my opinion, okay? Um, then the driving on East Mason Street. There is semis that are backed up from this entrance all the way down to the four-way stop at times. Now you're going to have another warehouse here where they're going to have to go down that lane to get into there, and you're going to have this warehouse around the corner for Nature's Way. Where is this traffic going, going down Mason Street? Besides all the, tra the employees that are going that live out in Luxembourg, Denmark, out in the east, they can't get through there. Now they're already racing down there because they're going around the semis that are waiting to get in the lane here. It's right in my backyard. And with not having any noise there, I, I, well, semis, I don't know if anybody's ever heard semis backing up in the shuttle drivers. They're making a lot of noise and they don't just raise up the ramps and pull the semis away, they just blow up and let them clang. And I don't know if you guys can hear it back over on, on uh, Finger Road, but it's 24-7. And this is going to be the same thing. This one over here, Nature's Way, is going to be the same thing. Um, you're going to lose a lot of people down here. People that lived right here in the corner, they just left. They were disgusted. So they, they lived right here in the end. They said, well, just, we have a berm right there. That will stop the noise. And what about the berm back here? Stopping all this noise over in this side. So that's, again, that's my opinion. I know what they're worth, but thank you. Okay, thank you. Move to close yeah. the floor. Yeah. Return to regular order of business, I think is the language. Second. We have a motion and a second. So return to regular order of business. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Is there any further discussion among the commission? If not, the chair would entertain a motion. I move that we accept the recommendation of the staff, which is to deny the request. I'm not seeing, although we do not yet have anything to go in there, I do not see the fit here with the area around it. I do not see the sense in crossing over Mason Street uh, with the business park. I wish there were space in the, business, in the business park and further away from housing. There isn't, and I think this is far too close to the residential area. So my motion is to accept the recommendation of the staff. Thank you. Commissioner Miller. Uh, I do agree with Sid on that. Uh, I think one thing that 
popped in my head when we were listening to everyone speak is I think this probably does need to be looked at in terms of the comp plan overall. Um, the, the, view, the 2003 version of this certainly it doesn't take into account as, as they mentioned. Mm -hmm. So is this the right answer? Probably not. Um, but I think it does need to be looked at. And I don't know when the next update will be coming, if that's already in the works or if it needs to be looked at separately. But um, I think it does need to be looked at for a longer term, better use than maybe what it's at right now. Uh, that being said, I would second SIDS recommendation to deny. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Just to address Commissioner Miller's um, point. We actually just talked about the comp plan today mm -hmm. and that we are in need of an update. Uh, I think, you know, demographic, social, typical changes have taken <laughs> place since that um, was last written. Uh, so, so two things. One is, you know, providing an update um, to the comprehensive plan, uh, we're working on and putting a strategy together for doing that. Uh, I think more imminent, though, um, we also have a, a separate team uh, working on an expansion of, of the I-43 business park. Um, as the infrastructure comes down Erie Road, um, you know, water and sewer uh, enables us to expand the business park, you know, to the east, um, you know, providing some additional large lot sites. Uh, I think we're also looking at just from you know what was proposed in the original plan in terms of some areas that maybe were slated for housing that don't make sense for housing, um, you know, other areas that um, you know are best used for you know industrial use or other things that fit in. Um, but then again, you know, so being cognizant of development that has taken place out there, um, you know, working around Friars Path, uh, the development of Grandview, um, and just making sure that we, we do that in a compatible, responsible manner. Um, and, and so I think, you know, our initial discussions where things were at today, though, um, you know, we felt the recommendation was based on, uh, you know, some of that potential in the future moving west, and that this was not uh, the best option for looking at the change uh, in this specific parcel. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Yes, Commissioner Perkowski. I guess more of a thought than a discussion. I, I think that this commission, since I've been on it, has been pretty aggressive about being willing to deviate from the plan uh, to accommodate business owners, at least in my experience since I've been on the commission. Um, and that's generally my posture as well. The thing that gives me pause about this particular proposal is generally when we've deviated in the past, we've done it on the basis of very specific proposals with a specific design in mind with a specific plan for how it will affect the residents so their questions can be answered first. And we have a lot more clear picture of where we'd be going with the amendment. Um, and that's why I intend to, to vote uh, to deny the proposal as, as the staff has recommended. <coughs> that being said, to the landowners, if you would be willing to come back with a specific buyer and project in mind with more specifics to essentially uh, assage some of the residents' concerns and the commission's concern, I would be inclined to <coughs> view a more specific project more favorably because we'd be able to give more answers and have a more clear vision of how we can make this fit with the neighborhood. So because I'm voting today against this doesn't mean that I would in the future with a more specific plan with a more specific idea in mind. So I would encourage you to continue marketing it and try and find something that would be a better fit for this land with this community with more specifics to address the concerns of the residents. Thank you. I as well um, support the decision of the city in the denial of the request um, for the reasons stated by the city as well as the reasons stated by the residents in the area. Um, but to echo Commissioner Randy's sentiments on um, specifics, yeah, I would absolutely be willing to look at this again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes. Thank you. And if I could add to that, I would also uh, encourage folks to consider some kind of mixed use that would raise the um, residency there, multi-residential, mixed with some commercial that might blend more between the business park and the residents beyond. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? All the recommendation? Signify by 
Just to clarify, the recommendation, a yes is to deny. A yes is to deny. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just want to make sure. located in the 1600 block of West Mason Street from low density housing to commercial land use, submitted by Mark Johnson, DRM Incorporated. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, this is another common plan amendment, so we had public hearings before. Um, and this is for uh, five properties along the 1600 block of West Mason. So we have South Military Avenue here, West Mason coming through this way, Irvington Street and Mitchell. Um, Sort of the uses out here, you have sort of large scale, big box commercial uh, with some outlots across the street. There's a grade change on the north side of, of Mason, a uh, service station on the corner. Um, you have another large commercial shopping center here on the southeast corner, a commercial running up along military. Um, just the, just the, the top of the southwest corner uh, has an existing restaurant with drive through. Um, and a service business. And then as you run to the west on the other side of Mitchell, it is primarily uh, multifamily, um, some singles to the south, and the neighborhood to the south is predominantly single family. Um, so this is kind of the area we're talking about. Um, this is our comprehensive plan recommendation. Everything that's in the yellow is a low density residential. Now low density residential isn't just single family, but it's low density, so it's twos maybe. Um, so that's what the comprehensive plan is recommending. You can see the commercial along the north side of Mason, um, and then sort of all the way along to Military Avenue. If I ballooned it out, you'd see it kind of following those corridors a little bit better. And the zoning out in this area, um, the red is a general commercial zoning. The red with the black hash marks, which you can see here by the uh, CVS, I believe that's the CVS. Um, and the gas stations are auto-oriented um, zoning, that's the C2 zoning. Uh, the solid is a C1 general commercial. Sort of your salmon color again is a very density uh, residential, so a higher density. And then the yellow is the low density, or, or the R1 single family zoning. Um, so, as I mentioned, the comprehensive plan uh, recommends low intensity or low density residential uses. Uh, this request is, is basically in a response uh, to a proposal that came to the city to develop a drive through restaurant. <coughs> and you know it from all the testimony before, but uh, an Arby's restaurant would be relocating from the other side of Irvington Street. Um, the developer would acquire five parcels that's owned by two property owners, um, one being vacant, um, used as a garden. Um, demolishing those um, and then building a new RV store, uh, 3,000 square foot store with a parking lot and drive through facilities. As I had mentioned before, the steps here are first the comp plan change to a commercial um, designation. Then you would come through with a zone change to probably a, a C2 or a C1 with a conditional use, uh, and then the site plan could come through. So out of those criteria that I talked about, the 10 criteria, um, staff saw that three of the 10 um, were uh, sort of opposed <coughs> to the criteria itself. Um, so 
change. One of them is the changes consistent with the goals and objectives of other elements of the uh, Smart Growth 2022 plan. We feel that these changes do not provide similar land uses. They're not compatible with the adjoining properties. Um, we also feel that the residential uses to the south would need to have uh, considerable buffering uh, from the higher density commercial uses, especially the auto-oriented commercial uses. There may be additional light and noise. Um, so let me go back to the aerial shot there. So currently, the residential uses here are consistent with um, our comprehensive plan, especially to the south and to the west. Um, and even a little bit higher, the zoning being very density could allow a little bit more density on those lots as well. Um, but again, as a residential status, um, we don't feel that commercial should be extended any further to the west um, on the south side of Mason than what it currently is. Uh, that would match our current comp plan, but not only the current comp plan, the city had done a military avenue market analysis and corridor plan a few years back. That one also recommended uh, that commercial not encroach any more into the uh, residential areas. Um, we do feel it would disrupt the activity at this whole block basically would disrupt the residential nature of the area. Uh, we do feel traffic would be increased. Um, we feel it is very auto-oriented uh, and, and not very compatible with the residential uses to the south. Um, as was mentioned uh, from some of the residents, the Military Avenue Corridor Plan uh, does demonstrate and depict a lot of available commercial sites along South Military, along West Mason, uh, but not just to the east, also to the west as you kind of go a little bit further, um, that there is uh, quite a few areas that are already uh, compatible with an auto-oriented use. Uh, staff doesn't feel that encroachment to the neighborhood to create more area um, is a wise decision, especially going against our plans. Uh, the Department of Public Works looked at the uh, looked at the site plan as a cursory type of review or complementary type of review. They didn't feel that this size of a development require a traffic impact analysis. Um, they do uh, state that West Mason can handle the traffic, um, but there is issues with the proximity to the Mason Street and Military Corner, which is the busiest corner apparently in the city, according to his memo. And then also that Mitchell Street uh, is difficult to access, uh, or not Mitchell, Irvington. Mitchell has the light, uh, but the the uh, light is very quick to turn. Um, so they didn't have a uh, need to have a traffic analysis, uh, but felt that the site itself would probably need to have some redesign to function properly. Um, I only state that because we did get the memo from them. Um, we haven't gotten any written concerns uh, from any of the neighbors or somebody else the, this time. Um, we did notice the neighbors and we noticed the older person um, and also Fireman's Park Neighborhood Association of the request. Uh, and with that, staff is recommending denial. Thank you. In case there is anything that has not come forward from the, uh, the public here, I would like to uh, open the floor. Second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second to open the floor. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, the floor is open. Does anybody have anything to say that hasn't already been discussed? Yes, sir. Yeah. My name is Mark Johnson. Uh, own the RVs at 1593 West Mason Street there. Um, from Omaha, Nebraska. First of all, very happy with that store. Very happy with the neighborhood. Very happy with the business we do there. Um, but I am in a 50, 51 year old building on a site that was designed in 1967. Um, it was never designed to accommodate a drive through. That was added in the mid 70s. And basically, the park at the time, businesses were, were more drive in, drive out. And so it's functionally obsolete for us right now. We've looked at a lot of opportunities there. We want to be in the area. Um, 
you know, I've looked at the remodeling aspect of it, but I don't gain anything because I can't pick up any any space on the site. So spending an awful lot of money doing something to the store, but not, you know, not improving the functionality of the store because of the site um, is just not a really good business decision. Um, you know, there's just not a lot of opportunity to grow there. I heard somebody stop talking about the corner, you know, cash rate, it's, it, it's not for sale. So it was discussed years ago with them and they have no interest. Um, so basically we've, we've been trying to decide what we're going to do in this location here. We want to be there and um, Garrett Bader, a real estate developer, has worked with us on another site in town and was talking about a development that he was working on there and we got interested. So I'll introduce Garrett here to have a few comments about what we're doing there. Or Everyone. Like to do. <laughs> Garrett Bader, 300 North Van Buren Street. Mark mentioned we started working together about three years ago when we did the deal over Main Street, a site that's not terribly dissimilar from this one. There are many same factors. You have a commercial zoning up against a, a neighborhood. You have a busy street. You have a commercial, largely commercial auto-oriented area. We looked, as Mark said, and following my comments by Dave and one of the gentlemen also, you see sometimes different properties and say, well, why not here, 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 there? We looked. And a number of times, just because it's a parking lot, just because it's already zoned commercial, doesn't mean the person's willing to sell, or that the metrics make sense, or that the price is something that can work. And we've struck out on just about every other thing. Um, first start working on this specific site about, so two and a half years ago, met with Gail, met with some other folks, looked at different options for the site, whether it was a potential bigger user or something that was a little more, more scaled. What we then did was, seeing all the other options that weren't available, we said, let's look and focus primarily on the properties just along Mason Street. Um, and so that's largely brought us to today. We uh, so renewed our effort back in spring. So in May, we sat down with staff, talked about some initial concerns. This is actually probably site plan version two, if not three. I want to say maybe some tweaks are made after two even to respond to initial concerns by staff and that regarded uh, driveway locations specifically, the rotation of the building, the orientation of the parking. So I think one thing that we want everyone to know is that the effort has been made trying to address concerns fit into the neighborhood and make everyone as, as happy as possible and as safe as possible. Uh, we also then held a meeting in July of the neighborhood meeting. Many of the folks that were here also were there and we heard the concerns. Um, much like today, the majority of those concerns largely result around traffic. And none of those are you know, insignificant. And I think that we've said what was said there today, what will be said today, what was said then, is that willing to work on anything whether that's talking about bus stops are bought up, those locations. Um, driveways, again, we took a Mason Street driveway out. I think one could be put back in if that helped disperse traffic and alleviated some concerns more. Um, buffers were talked about, you know, a fence, a screening, those sort of things. The commercial zoning districts typically require a 15 foot minimum setback between residential and commercial uses. This is 15 feet that you see there on the side. The more this can nudge to Mason Street, which maybe would require variance, but the more it can nudge north, the more buffer that allows south and what type of buffer that can be can really depend depending on what the neighborhood wants. Is that a fence? Is that a berm? Is that a greenery? Is that some combination? Anything is willing to be discussed. Um, I'm sure you guys saw not only this in your packet but also the letter from Mark's company that spelled out just kind of the reasons why they feel this is a good opportunity and I'll just I'll summarize some of those very briefly. Uh, first off, uh, David brought it up too, but the commercial uses to the north, northwest, and east this is a largely auto-dependent commercial area of town. So the fact that there's a commercial user that's interested in the Mason Street frontage I don't think should necessarily surprise us. We think it actually fits in with what's right around it. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the residential buffer could be there. So <coughs> if we are fortunate enough to be approved tonight, we'd be happy to have those discussions with the neighborhood on what type of buffer is appropriate. Um, do you think this would allow for actually some safer traffic movement for those that would use this restaurant compared to actually what happens now when the majority of traffic comes off Irvington or off Mason? Here, when you have the Mitchell option, if there is a Mason Street driveway with the existing Irvington option, you're able to disperse that a little bit more. And I respectfully disagree. I know many comments have been made about traffic coming into the neighborhood. As you see, it's right off Mason Street. Generally, you, you go out right where you came back in. So there really is no need or desire for patrons to go south into the neighborhood. I'm sure those who use <laughs> Sledding Hill 
or maybe if there's an occasional semi that get confused going to Broadway for our customers, these customers of RVs are not doing that. Um, I also want to make a note about the about the properties along Mason Street. You heard from Michelle earlier, she's one of the sellers. She's a willing seller and wants to sell these properties. The other property owner also, the properties are both under contract, wants to sell. Um, I think there's something that should be said to that for their opportunity to do that. But also, one comment was made, and I agree wholeheartedly. There's a charm to the homes that are back in the neighborhood. They're very nice homes, and in no way does anyone think that they're not, or that, you know, that we hope in no way this would ruin that. What isn't respectfully charmful, and this means nothing against anyone who lives there, are the properties along Mason Street. They have seen better days, they're a little distressed, and this is no insult to Michelle either or the other property owner. But I think she nailed it on the head when she said it's difficult to find people at times to live there because of the traffic on Mason. So one of the earliest discussions we had with staff was a request that this be more of a transitional residential area. And I think for those of you that know me, you know I've, I've done a fair share of that and I understand that. Respectfully, I think the market is telling us this is not an area where that would be warranted or appreciated. The second aspect is to build that type of housing today financially would not make sense for the rental rates that are average <coughs> for this particular area. That means nothing disrespectful towards anyone. It's realities of what is the market telling us and what can be built there. So what I think that means is, if not this, I think the properties that are there stay, and some probably want that to happen. I understand that. But I think as a city, we need to look at how does that area look compared to what's nearby it, and could this be a higher and better use there? We obviously feel that it could. So that is, uh, I think that's pretty much the main things that I chat about. Thank you. Thank you. Again, I'm Jesse Kajawa, uh, live at 724 Arlington Street. I live right in the zone. Uh, if you can go back a couple slides, please. I live right here. So I'm right in the cutoff for this area that you guys are looking at developing. Um, Garrett had talked about the, the traffic flow through Irvington Street here. He is, he is correct on one thing where we do get a lot of traffic um, coming in here, going through the drive through and coming out. We get a lot of traffic coming down here at times. This is very busy through here through Mason Street. As you guys know, it's hard enough uh, at Mitchell to get out. Imagine not, we don't have a stoplight here. It's almost impossible to get out of there at certain times of the day. Mm -hmm. um, what happens is the, the patrons that go to this existing restaurant, they can't get out here. They can't turn this way, they can't turn this way. So what do they do? They come out this way and go up to 6th. We, we do get a lot of traffic through there. Um, people that don't obey the speed limit. Um, we already have an issue with uh, the, the car dealership on the other end, that they have employees going through there 80 miles an hour. I've already been in touch with the Green Bay Police Department on that and talked to the general manager over at, um, at Broadway Ford about, about the issues that we have there. Um, I can certainly see that, uh, you know, if, if you, you take this and move it here, are we going to get additional traffic down this way? I don't know. It depends on how the, the, the traffic flow is. Um, but basically, you're, you know, you're, you're taking one driveway and moving it from Mason Street and putting it on two, uh, two residential streets. That, that is definitely going to increase the traffic flow. Um, so that's, that's my main, main concern about that. There are, um, uh, children that live here, children that live here, children that live here, children that live here, here, here uh, all children that are under the age of uh, approximately 12 years old. There's a lot of people that live there. We have uh, school buses that stop here to pick up children, stop at the end of the road to pick up children. My older daughters, uh, the, their bus stops here and here, and in the winter it's, it's crazy. So I don't know, I know we can move bus stops, that's not a big deal, but when you got kids that have to walk um, in the winter, first of all, my, my daughters have to go all the way around this way to, to get off the bus and, and get on the bus in the winter. If we move it 
further down that way, that's going to be a, be a challenge for them. They'd be better off taking them to school. They'd, they'd freeze their butts off before they get on the bus. So um, I would certainly encourage, uh, I, I know it doesn't work for a traffic study by the DPW, but uh, we could probably do something to do some, some kind of traffic analysis um, to see how that would, how it currently is and how it could impact. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Yes, sir. In an unrelated manner, I'm Peter Lieberman. I, I drive that road, uh, West Mason Road, a lot, two, three, four times a day. And in the winter time, when you got the snow on the road here, keep in mind Walmart's out there, and you got all these people living here that want to walk to Walmart, and they walk on the road. There is no sidewalk. So, in your thoughts, in the future, when you're looking at things down the road, you need to get a sidewalk on here or somebody's going to get killed. And I'll, I'll test to that. Because you come across somebody carrying a bag and they're wearing dark clothes at night in the winter and they walk on the road. Because there is no other place to walk. You don't have a sidewalk. And wouldn't you, with, you know, to tie it to what we're talking about, wouldn't you see more foot traffic going to Arby's? If you put in a bigger Arby's, and they put in some really nice stores now, <coughs> so people are going to want to hang out there, and then there's foot traffic. So you don't have sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else? Yes, sorry. Bob Corey, I own a duplex on Richard Street. 72722. And I talked with the gentleman there, and they're awful willing to work the neighbors and want to appease us. And I guess the big thing is the traffic. And my concern is everybody said a lot here, and I, I kind of chuckled myself because I went down Mitchell a couple times to do something, and I ran that red light because I waited and waited. But my real concern is. He's saying he doesn't, doesn't own the armies over here. He puts their armies here, and you have traffic. And this guy here owns his armies here, he rents it out to somebody else, you've got more traffic. So unless the city can figure out a way to get rid of the traffic, or to alter put someplace else, it's gonna be, it'll be worse. And he said that he, uh, his concern is the traffic. You know, by putting two outlets, that'd be fine, you know, if, if, you, if that would work. But it's not going to work because you're, that's just for this one store here. you got a store over here that's going to reopen for business and bring more traffic. So unless you can figure out a way to do traffic, I don't know what the answer is. So like I said, I'm all for the improvements, but you got to have a second plan. So that's all I got to say. Thank you. Anybody else? I have something to say. I'm here for a whole different matter. But I just wanted to say, I own the Beacon Center office suites. So I, I see this whole intersection every day, all day long. And so I get what Garrett's saying. I, I'm kind of confused. I get the whole quaint neighborhood, because I'm from a quaint neighborhood too. But I'm kind of confused on the remarks of the in and out of Mitchell Street and how it's going to affect what we want to do here on West Mason. Because when I seen the plan right here, how we're coming in and out of what West Mason, because I'm telling you, that is like a suicide plan that's going on right now at Arby's. Because when you try to come in off of West Mason to get into Arby's, and you're going like up this hill and around to get in and out, and then to get back onto West Mason, it, 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 it's just a mess. You can't get in and out of West Mason. You can't get in and out of Irwin. And I find that much more of a safety issue with kids involved and little ones on and off that sidewalk. And I see the bus stop and the kids standing there. And I disagree. Arby's is really busy at lunchtime. 
So if we ever try to get over there from our office to get any kind of lunch, like I avoided at lunch because there's little ones always around there and they're hanging around that sidewalk and that line backs up that, I don't know if any of you have been through the drive through but you know, you're, you're swinging around going down this hill to get around there and when it backs up, you're on Irwin to even get through this drive through So you're always avoiding the little ones at the bus stop and playing on the sidewalk and there's like a duplex over there and a couple of rentals. And I appreciate, because I have rentals, so I appreciate the gal who has the rentals. It's gotta, it has to be really difficult to try to rent rentals on West Mason. You have to be a very special tenant to wanna rent on that particular uh, street because that street has become, it is the busiest corner in Green Bay, West Mason, in military. They've done a lot of studies and you know, advertisement to me mm -hmm. to be able to rent a lot of my office suites out. But it is a very busy corner. I have seen more accidents and ambulances come from people trying to run across from that Burlington Coat Factory over to that Arby's, mm -hmm. trying to run back and forth. Just please keep in mind that this is strictly a, a comp plan change. Um, okay. The rezoning is at a later date. Yep, that's where it comes to fruition. Okay. And then any site plan which includes driveways and egress and access and everything would be at a later date. Okay, so well I'm just saying that... This is just a change for the comp plan. Right okay, well, well the plan that they were talking about and changing the driveway yeah. and the, and and the that's, access... That's down the road. Okay, the road. well, I, I guess what they're proposing just looks much safer to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that's just watching it every day and seeing what goes on and what they're proposing and what's going on right now. Yeah. It just looks like a much safer plan to me, what I see going on there daily. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak? Okay, thank you. There is one last thing. Oh, okay. Thank you. Move we return to regular order of business. Second. We have a motion and a second to return to business. Any further discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we are back. Any further discussion among commission? <coughs> I have a question. Commissioner uh, could, could one of the staff members just explain uh, to the commission exactly how traffic works now with the current RV so everyone's very clear on that? Sure. Uh, so the current RV is located at this site. So traffic has to come in off of Irvington. There's a hill at this, there's a great change between. Irvington and the prime parking lot. So they come in off of this way, they swing around, the pickup window is here, and then the exit is here. So on directly on Mason Street? Correct. There's also an entrance off of Mason where you can get in and park. Uh, you wouldn't be able to go to the drive through like right now, coming off of Irvington and enter here. And I would, I would assume that the proposal would be to close that location and not have neighboring RVs. <laughs> Just to be very clear. Well, I don't know. Yeah, this is a, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? I would like to put my comment in. Um, I am a patron of that RV site. Go there maybe once a week. And you work sometimes around noon, sometimes around two or three o'clock in the afternoon. And I always exit onto Mason and make the right-hand turn and go south on military. And I have never had to wait more than a couple of minutes because you get do have the lights at Mitchell, so when those lights turn red for Mason, then there's always an easy way to get out. So I have never really encountered any issues <coughs> with traffic during the day. Not to say there aren't any, just I have never had an issue with it, for whatever that's worth. Further discussion? I'm ready to show and entertain a motion. Further discussion? I'm, I am not able to get my head around the traffic problems here for the side streets. Um, this does not involve an exit onto Mason. 
for any relief from Mitchell and Irvington. And Mitchell especially with the number of buses and the children on both of those streets. I think we've really got ourselves in a pickle. And until we have some kind of way of seeing our way through the traffic problems, I'm not willing to establish a commercial um, zoning here for commercial land use. Commissioner Miller. Uh, this just feels too tight for, is what keeps, I keep coming back to. Um, I understand there's some traffic issues that are already at the current location, but it feels like we're just going to move the problems a block over in that scenario. Um, so while it may not even be the best scenario where it is right now, it is where it is right now, and moving it I don't think is really going to necessarily fix any of those issues. Um, normally I'm one of the first ones to say traffic is overblown, but this doesn't feel like that, like a lot of the other issues. So. Um, it's probably not the highest use what it is right now, um, distressed homes, but this doesn't feel like the right answer for it right now either. Um, in addition, the I don't know when the military Avenue plan was done, but that was fairly recent. What? The past five, seven years. Okay. So even looking past the comp plan being a little bit aged as we did in the prior um, item, we have a pretty recent look at it from the, um, a, a much more, honestly, probably even more detailed version than we would have from a general complaint. So I don't see any reason that we should be going forward with this at this time, the way it's looking. Um, I would bring a motion to deny the request. I have a question. Uh, I understand that um, uh, the city traffic uh, planner didn't feel that it was necessary to issue a traffic report uh, at this time, can we request one to be done and a report to be submitted to the commission? Well, they wouldn't do the traffic analysis. They would request the petition to do traffic analysis. If the uh, volume of, so what they do is basically look at the site, they look at the size of the building and the use and determine how much traffic is going to be generated by that use, not look at where it's going or what it's doing. And at that point, it'll trigger if a traffic impact analysis should take place if the volume of traffic is going to increase and they felt that it would not increase uh, enough to <coughs> require a traffic impact analysis. If they did, they would request the petitioner when they come and do a site plan to provide that. Generally not for a comp plan amendment double, I guess. Or I guess it could. And that's why I say it's a bit of a pickle. Because without some way of relieving the traffic that any commercial use would be likely to increase, I don't see any basis for going forward with commercial use. Any further discussion? Okay. We do have a motion to deny the request. Is there a second? I move. Is it a motion to deny or a motion to accept the denial? It's a motion to, to deny the request, but to, to accept, accept the recommendation. Yeah. I mean, based on what staff has said, as well as, um, again, information from the neighbors, I, I support the staff's recommendation. So, you all second? I'll second, yes. Okay. So we have a motion and a second to deny the request. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. We vote in vote yes. Aye. Vote yes to deny. Just to confirm again, a vote yes is a vote to deny. Correct. Okay. Actually, yeah, this will also go to City Council on the point next Tuesday. Yes. Yeah. 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 And we have 
will be having coming up to the we suspend the rules. Okay. the motion to suspend the rules. Okay. Yeah, motion to suspend the rules first. Okay. Yeah. 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 Now, we can move item 7 now. Uh, consideration with possible action on a request to rezone a property located at 1532 Shano Avenue from office residential to general commercial, submitted by Scott R. Elsner. This is a request to rezone this property from office residential to a commercial district. So as you can see in the staff report, this request comes in from a business. It's a retail business that works as a pawn shop and a tobacco outlet. Um, the location is near the intersection of Military Shadow, so sort of in the same neighborhood that we were just talking. This is the old Jim Powell Dance Studio. It's now a vacant commercial building. There are no uses in it. For reference, the uh, was it Perkins is there. There's a Walgreens here. This is a strip center and a funeral home across the way. Uh, within the Military <coughs> Avenue plan and then also within the comprehensive plan, it does call for commercial uses here with a hard line between the commercial uses and the single family that is to the east of this property. And the existing zoning is office residential. Um, the request is for the expansion of C1, which is neighboring with the Perkins and that Walgreens facility. Uh, we are recommending approval of the request uh, just based off of the type of businesses that are around and also based off of the comp plan and the Military Avenue plan. Um, there are, is the option for the petitioner to have office residential zoning and get a conditional use permit to allow for this type of a use, but we thought it would be best to do the rezoning because it does match the comprehensive plan and the military avenue plan that both recommend commercial. So to do the expansion of the C1 district makes more sense just to have an all-encompassing district with that hard line right next to the residential district um, to the east. And that's that. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Any questions? Does the staff have any concerns about a pawn shop and smoke um, store next to an elementary school? How next to is the elementary school? I guess I'm not as familiar with the area. I'm sorry, I thought it was um, that, uh, green. The area in the teal is a chapel school. Um, generally, we treat all retail uses as retail uses. So what comes out of that store is usually regulated by state statutes, those sorts of things. Um, a pawn shop doesn't necessarily bring any different type of user to the site than it would if it were the Walgreens that brings people in all the time. Perkins is a 24-hour facility. So the extension of this district doesn't necessarily bring more or less people into the site, um, specifically not any less desirable people that should be near mm -hmm. an elementary school. Mm -hmm. I was thinking more about the elementary school kids wanting to access the shop. That might be a but parenting thank issue. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And just I think in terms of the scope, generally our domain looks at uh, particular uses, protection and welfare. I know that the committee looks when it comes to licensing of alcohol products rather than through special licenses. Mm -hmm. Does closely look at that, but in terms of from a zoning perspective, I mean we're only looking at I guess from the retail type category and not deciding specifically what they sell for things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we want you to open the floor. Motion to open the floor. Second. We have a motion and a second to open the floor. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the floor is now open. Yes, sir. My name is Scott Olsner. I live at uh, 2071 Casner Drive. And um, I'm the person that is moving my 11-year business to this location. I am now residing in Howard at 1718 Phillip Avenue, um, right between Fastenal and Grandpa's Pick and Pull Your Own Parks, if you guys know where I'm at. Um, <coughs> just to address your concern of the school, because I was worried about that too, this is all fenced in that kids cannot come to my place unless they come all the way over here to here. This is uh, the building right here, and this is a little bit of parking lot, and this is all wooded area. 
that eventually I'd like to put a pole barn there or something, but I got to go through all that, whatever. But right now, <laughs> the building is all over right here, and this is all wood. So there's no way a school kid could get to me unless they jump the fence and then, you know, whatever. But the fence is like 10 feet high. Um, but the property is being run right now by someone that isn't conducting business very well. Um, the um, alderman came and visited me a couple days ago. He liked my operation. Um, yeah, it's Mark um, Sawyer. Sawyer, yep, Mark Sawyer. And I thought he was gonna be here tonight, but apparently he couldn't make it. But um, he liked the idea. Um, the owner of the property wants the unruly tenant out of there, wants me to go there. I've been in business March 1st, 11 years. And you don't stay in business so long, that long uh, screwing people over. So <laughs> I have, uh, you know, I've got a lot of trust in the community. I've, I've got people that leave um, uh, items for me to sell. I, like right now I've got a $15,000 toolbox that I'm trying to sell for somebody. I've got Harley Davidson's. I've got another toolbox that's very expensive. I am very trusted in the community and I'll create jobs in that area because Right now, it's a mom and pop shop. Me and my mom, me and my mom. <laughs> my mother just passed in February, so I still say that all the time. She was one of my partners. But anyway, um, it, um, me and my partner, um, which I was hoping she could be here tonight too, but um, she couldn't either. Um, we plan on just making the whole area look really nice, because right now it looks really terrible. It needs a lot of, uh, pruning and that kind of stuff. So we're going to do nothing but plus the area. And that's all I got to say. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Does anybody else wish to speak on this? Okay. Thank you. Well, with appreciation for, oh, we have to close the floor. Yes. yes. Return to regular order business. Second. We have a motion and a second to return to regular order of business. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we are back. With my uh, concern addressed, and I appreciate that very much, mm -hmm. um, I move to uh, approve this request. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the recommendation. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those. Oh, would you please vote? <laughs> I didn't get it. Jeff, are you voting to approve? So we're on this go. Well, we just, oh, okay. just recommend the city council. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but we're working on it. All right. As long as, as soon as the machinery uh, catches up. I'm just kind of excited. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't got it. And you're voting to approve? Yes. Okay. Aye. Okay. Approved unanimously. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. The condition is approved. All right, have, have a wonderful night. You too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next item, item three. Consideration with possible action on the request to authorize a conditional use permit to permit a minor auto repair in the downtown one district at 523 North Broadway submitted by Abby Velasco, operator and Bruce Johnson property owner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so this property is on the corner of Broadway. As you can tell what it is. Broadway and Bond Street. It's in the southwest corner. It was a, uh, it's a little over 6,000 square feet. It has a 1,400 square foot uh, structure on it that was built in 1950 as an auto service center. So it has a couple bay doors on off Bond Street, an office building that it's off of the parking lot in the front. Um, comprehensive plan recommends high intensity residential housing or office. Um, across the street obviously is the rail yard area and then as you 
transition to the west, it goes into a, a low, de low to medium density housing. The zoning for the site is downtown one, as you had mentioned. Any auto-oriented uses, including minor auto service, require a conditional use permit in the downtown district. Um, so met with the petitioner, property owner, and the alderman together. We looked at the site basically, and I'm going to kind of go to it now. Um, this is the site with the site plan over the top of it. Um, the business that's currently located there that requires the conditional use permit is T's Tires. It's a minor auto repair shop, mainly tire shop. Um, so we met with the owner and the uh, tenant, talked about the operations of the site and felt that there, um, that staff could support this type of use on the site, but there would be a few uh, operational conditions that we would recommend, uh, such as uh, hours of operation, controlling any exterior storage of tires or other, other goods, including display, and limiting, limiting parking to, you know, of non-related vehicles to the site. We also met and looked at the site uh, found that it had not been maintained in a lot of years, so there was no striping. Um, there was a curb cut on Broadway that led to the front of parking stalls. There was a, a curb cut on Bond that had uh, expanded to about 60 feet wide, going into the side of stalls, and felt there was quite a few safety issues with that. So working with the petitioner and the owner, came up with this site plan um, to kind of correct the site and make it as aesthetically pleasing as possible. Now it is, the minor auto repair is not really a high intensity residential office or housing use. However, this site itself is under 7,000 square feet in size. On its own, it could not support that type of use. It's just too small of a site. If it can be, go back to the aerial. You'll notice to the south, there is some vacant property there. In the future, if that block were to be redeveloped, you would have an area for something that's more high intensity. Um, but at this point, that lot on its own um, really could not support that. And so for that reason, we would support the interim use of minor auto repair. That use could be um, beneficial to the neighboring property owners, the entire changes. Um, the building is obviously designed for that type of use. It has bay doors off the bond. Um, and with the site improvements that the petitioner is offering to do as part of the conditional use permit, we feel that the site would be um, a great improvement to what it is now. So we are recommending approval of request uh, for the CUP. But we do have some conditions. So compliance with all regulations of the municipal code. We're asking them to stripe the stalls as indicated on the site plan, including one handicap stall, closed portions of Bond Street curb cut, down to what's allowed by code, which is a much about well, half the size as it is now, and remove the un, uh, return the unneeded pavement to grass, close the Broadway curb cut altogether, return that to grass, add wheel stops to protect the sidewalk from parked cars, uh, being that the site is completely paved, and not allow any outdoor storage of any materials. Uh, any outdoor display would have to be in a professionally constructed case or be brought in in the evening. We wouldn't allow any inoperable or unregistered vehicles not associated with the work on site to be there for any greater than 30 days, or excuse me, to be there at all. Anything associated with the business could not remain on the lot for more than 30 days. Um, not allow any outdoor repair work and limit hours of operation from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. And I should have went to this because you could see it here. <laughs> <Ta -da. laughs> Could you go back to the previous one? Um, on the curb <laughs> cut, the curb cut. Um, am I understanding that the trapezoid with on Bond Street? This, yeah. This one? Yeah. yeah so this is all one giant uh, apron right. right now. Has been expanded over time. So it's going to be small but down to that piece in the middle, right? Correct. With green on both sides. What happens to the gray area just to the northwest of the green. This? Not too yeah. That's grass. Good. <laughs> that's, that's what I need. Great grass. Okay. And my other question, have you talked with the 
tenant here as well as the owner about the qualifications and are they fully understood and agreed to? The tenant is here. I've talked both with the tenant and the owner. I uh, met with the alderman out there with them several times. We have many iterations of this plan and redesigning the parking lot. Um, and he can speak for himself, but I believe he is uh, accepting of these conditions. But you've reviewed them all with him? Correct. Great. Thank you very much. Do we further discussion among the Okay. Anybody wish to speak on this? Yes, ma'am. My name is Margaret Wellen, and I live at 605 North Broadway. It's just up, mm -hmm. two doors up. And I would be very much in favor of his permit being granted. I think he would be an asset to the neighborhood. Um, he, uh, the thing I like about his business is he keeps what I call normal business hours. It's like Monday to Friday. <laughs> the last guy that was in there had a tow truck business with huge flatbed trucks that would pick up cars from wherever all night and day, seven days a week. And those, just a backup the beepers that would go with the trucks. But um, that's it. I like his hours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And he's a nice guy. Did anybody else wish to speak? You can go ahead, sir. Speak You're going to go take it last? Yeah, year? of course. I'll take it last. <laughs> can we have the slide of the uh, um, lots? I own this lot right here next to Margaret, who just spoke. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, we just landscaped. Um, it's really hard to grow grass. So with all due respect to the plan, planner here, I think he has too many conditions on this guy. Way too many. I think you need to take the grass out of it. This has been a, a car lot all the time. I'm right here. I'm. I see what goes on here, real close, up close. <coughs> like she said, the last guy had the uh, trucking business. Sometimes he'd let his diesel truck run. Wrecked a birthday party one time with diesel smoke. Um, they, he needs. He has a really small lot. He 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 needs customers, and he's going to need all that for his business. And we want him to be successful. So you've got way too many conditions. And if you ever tried to grow grass on Broadway Street here in this apron, I want to put brick in. You can't grow grass. It dies. I put sod in there and it was dead from the salt of the road. This is a, a highway. They keep this clear. This is the state highway. Now, with all due respect to all his conditions that he's put on the guy, he, he ain't going to make it. I, I ran a car business. You, you got to have cars. You got to. You're waiting for parts. Um, you got to have, you know, cars. And to define them and have them stripe his lot, that's another condition that's just going to make his business really hard to run. You know, because he's going to have to move stuff around, and he's got a little place in here. Um, so he's going to. It's just like when you uh, go to warmer climates. They're going to be fixing cars out in the yard. Them, them cars aren't going to sit there and then he's going to drive one in and work on it and then drive it back out. When you work on cars, you've got to take the wheels off and stuff. And, and then there's a time frame to getting parts and stuff and putting it back together. Now, he's a small businessman. Why, why should we bind his hands with all kinds of rules? You know, I can see hours and I can see, um, uh, uh, you know, noise, keep the noise down. Um, but I, I, I totally disagree with binding his hands. 
Um, you so said conditions have already been set and they've been agreed to. So. Well, I disagree with binding his hands and I disagree with that kind of rules. I understand that you're not you're going to prove it on a, a totally different grounds, but you're you're really binding this kid's hand, and he's he's going to struggle to make it. Why not make him a rich man and let him make some money? <laughs> this business um, runs till dark sometimes because after hours, we've never had any issues um, with T's management of his business so far. Um, He's, he's willing to say hi, he's willing to wave, and um, I've talked to him, and, and he's talked to me, and we talk. We uh, help each other, so uh, I totally stand behind the recommendation of approving this. Great. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Well, sir. <clears throat> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eddie Velasco. Um, I'm the you know, one that's running the T's Tires LLC. Um, the only thing I want to say is, you know, I'm here for the community. Anything that I can help you with, you, know, you can go to my shop. And if I can help you, there it is. Um, I try to be helpful to everybody. You know, I like to I like to work on cars. That's what I like. It's my passion. Um, the com but I understand. Me and um, David spoke about you know the, the conditional use permits about the curb, and I totally understand it. Um, I totally understand where it's coming from, where you guys might be coming from. Um, I'm more than willing to fix the problems if that's what keeps me going on in my business. Um, so hope you guys take that in consideration and let me keep running my business. Thank you, gentlemen, ladies. Thank you. Ms. Mom? Before you sit down, um, I want to congratulate you on the strong support you have from your neighbors. Thank you, ma'am. I think that's perfectly marvelous. And it's clear that you really have operated in a way that is um, considerate of them. Uh, I think one of the reasons for the conditions, if I can take a guess here, might have to do with some previous complaints about your business in other locations mm -hmm. and concerns to make sure that there would not be a repetition of, of those earlier experiences. And frankly, I expected the staff to deny okay. to, or to recommend denial. Mm -hmm. because of that previous record. Okay. Uh, and they turned it around, and I think that's one of the ways they turned it around. Um, with that in mind, have you gone through, and we can have that page now with the, the list of conditions. Are you aware of all of these conditions, and are you agreeable to them? Yes, ma'am. Um, you know, I understand where you're coming from. Um, you know, that's why I actually mm -hmm. learned from, from previous um, things. Um, as you can see, me and um, the planner David, I've actually walked around the shop. Um, you know, he's, he, he's, you know, he could be my, my man because I mean, he knows more about the city <laughs> than I would, you know. But I mean, I, um, you know, like I tell my, my, my neighbors, if there's any, anything that's bugging you, um, you know, I will definitely take care of it for the same reason that I've learned from past experiences what, what I've done wrong. So, um, you know, I, I can't just quit. You know, I have to, a successful man has to continue on with his business. For, Fell once, fell twice, learn it from them, and keep moving forward, you know? So that's where I'm standing at. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> we don't like it. Yeah. Any further discussion? I move we return to regular order of business. Second. We have a motion and a second to return to regular order of business. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. We are back. Okay, and I have a question um, for staff. I understand the concern about the difficulty with growing grass, and it's very nice of you to have raised that. Is the issue the need for a certain percentage of non-permeable, or permeable surface, rather? Oh, ma'am. The issue is, this driveway extended as it is right. directs cars into the side of a parking stall. This driveway directs cars into the front of a parking stall. This is a leftover, and I appreciate you're saying, you know, don't come down on a businessman to try to, what we're trying to do is clean the site up. This site also reflects on an area. North Broadway is 
highly transitioning at this time. Mm -hmm. These baby steps make a big difference for future investment, for people to want to continue to invest, people to buy condos. Um, striping is required by code, period. You're a lot of striped. So that's actually just a code condition. Uh, driveway widths are limited. Um, so basically what's on here is all code requirements. Mm -hmm. The site now is grandfathered or mm -hmm. legal non-conforming because it was built prior. Okay. So when you do the change of use, we're requesting the site be updated. And frankly, from a sta safety standpoint, a lot of the things that Abby's willing to do is going to make this site safer, whether he stays at this location or outgrows it and goes into a bigger spot. Um, the site itself will be um, improved, okay. whether he's here or the next. So it's not green space. It's really safety and code compliance. OK, thank you. I think just as far as the terrace concerned, I mean, that's also the public right of way. Mm -hmm. Generally, I mean, traditionally, we grass terraces. I know our public works department has worked with various other property owners to look at alternative landscaping materials. Just the caveat, you know, you know, if you're gonna put in a lot, that they can come in and dig it up because mm -hmm. there's pipes and the other things under there. Um, but there are alternatives, maybe just mm -hmm. the, the turf grass. But I think to, to Mr. Buck's point, that you know, closing those off so it's not just kind of a wide open driveway all around, around the corner is, is important in terms from a, a safety aspect. Um, but that needs to be designated as so that that's no longer a driveway. And to further extrapolate, um, some of these conditions, such as hours of operation, no outdoor repair work permitted, are basic conditions for any auto repair. Gen I mean, generally, they're ones that we've attached to other auto repairs throughout the city exactly. in terms of you know being a good neighbor. Um, you know, I, I think again too, you know, long term, if, if there's uh, impediments to, to running a business, the applicant can come back and look at you know relief or changing some of those conditions as part of the, the permit. Um, generally, I mean, I think this is where we start. When we look at these across the city. And with the understanding that the return to grass on the Bond Street is return to something that clearly delineates the driveway, right? Correct, yeah, it, it is a right-of-way, so whatever public works would permit in the right-of-way okay. terrace is acceptable. With, with that broader understanding of the word grass, right. then I'd like to uh, move to uh, accept the recommendation of staff. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept the recommendation of staff, which is approval. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please vote. Yes, I'm still not. Okay. In favor, aye. In favor? Yeah. Yes, order. Yeah. Yeah, mine's not either, but I'm in favor. In favor? Right. Unanimously approved. Unanimously approved. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. Good luck. Have a beautiful night. Can you read that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We're still friends. Of course. Thanks for your with possible action and a request to authorize a conditional use permit to permit a single family dwelling in a very density residential at 720 North Broadway submitted by Tim Dennison, Neighbor Works Green Bank. Thank you. So this lot is now vacant. The um, REA for the City of Green Bay had bought a previous three family unit that was pretty dilapidated and demoed it. So it's a vacant lot right now located here. This is James Street, North Broadway, and then Mather Street. So it's just past the downtown core. 
Um, the surrounding neighborhood, this is from the comprehensive plan, does show in some industrial, some high medium residential. It's pretty mixed bag, um, especially considering that the industrial isn't really all that close. There's a section of industrial here, but the comp plan does call for that expansion. Conditional use permits do not have to follow the comprehensive plan, but considering the existing uses there, this is pretty in line. So right now, this is our very des density residential district. This is single family and then some commercial and other types of zonings there. But all the uses surrounding this property are single family. So these are all single family. This is a, I believe this is a the neighbor's build that was single family. Everything else in the surrounding neighborhood, regardless of the zoning, is a single family home. So with that, the RDA does have an agreement with neighbors to build the single family home in this R3 zoning district, which does require that conditional use permit. Um, we see no issue with this, considering the existing uses of the neighborhood and its uh, location towards downtown. Um, Alder and Scandal, the Fort Howard Neighborhood Association, and all surrounding property owners within 200 feet were notified of the request, and we did not receive any concerns, comments, or calls. So with that, we are recommending approval uh, with the basic conditions that we have that they meet all other municipal codes and the UDC code. And we do have the elevations here. Um, I believe that this is still under the works with the RDA, so I don't know if this is the final elevation quite yet, um, but this is what they are proposing for the site as of now. to speak on this? Sure. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll speak to this. Uh, Tim Dennison, Project and Development Manager at Neighborhood Street Bay, and I'm proposing this. Um, if you want to go back to the last map, yeah, that would be, this was good. Uh, in 2015, the Strategic Plan and Development at NeighborWorks targeted the north end of the Broadway district. And we had a new build here, renovation here, a couple renovations on James Street, but more importantly, we did a single family for sale re renovation here on a nice classic Victorian, uh, along with the Bridges program with Green Bay Area Public Schools, we did a new build here. So completing this block area uh, nicely would be to put a a, a different property on there. So um, I put together a plan I thought would work with us and the RDA. We sought a donor uh, to help with the gap funding on the project, private donor, and, and we did receive approval of that. So we are proposing to go ahead. Um, it'll be similar in scope to the home across the street that we did last year. Again, it'll be a bridges build, which is a con um, group of um, Green Bay Area Public Schools, uh, NeighborWorks Green Bay, yeah. NWTC, and Habitat. So we're, that's what we're proposing. The, the uh, students will build most of the project. They can build the entire project. But, uh, and it would be done at the end of the school year again, just like the one across the street. Thank you. Any further discussion? Move to return to regular order. Second. We have a motion and a second to return to regular order of business. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the recommendation. Any further discussion? With thanks to NeighborWorks for their leadership. Okay. Thank you. Hearing none, I ask that you attempt to vote. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 
Share some of that. Now I will. Okay. Favor, I. Favor. Thank you. Thank you. Item 5. Consideration with possible action on a request to rezone the property at 1000 Main Street and 1003 Pine Street from General Commercial to Highway Commercial. Submitted by Ron L. Smith's property owner. Thank you. This site will look pretty familiar to you guys. We just saw this a couple months ago at Planning Commission. This is Newly Near Auto, which is on the corner of Main Street and Webster Avenue. Um, just for some of reference, there's a CVS pharmacy here and the PDQ car wash is here with Title One Club across the street. Um, comprehensive plan, we had the amendment go through. It went from the medium high residential office, something or another, way too long to pronounce, and going to commercial. So that's still pending with City Council. We'll get um, hopefully approval at our next meeting. So this would be the follow-up to then go from the C1 zoning to the C2 zoning for this. So again, this area is primarily commercial zoning. This is all the C1, the basic rather than the hatching with the C2, which would be the request here. Um, you did look at a site plan at the last one, but just to remind you that the site plan would go through our standard site plan approval process. There'd be no conditions on this. So with that though, they are proposing removing this portion of the building that fronts onto Pine Street here. So all of this would be the parking area, this building retained, and then the existing building structure here would be retained. So with that, we are recommending the approval of the request. We've already kind of went through this, saw everything we needed to see with the last one. Um, I know there were some concerns at the last meeting about the amount of impervious space that would be required. So through site plan review, they would be required to do an 80% max impervious space. So if they wanted to change anything with that, they would have to go through our Board of Appeals to get that approval. But right now, it's at 80%. Thank you. Yes? Did you say they're proposing to remove that building? Yes. Because it's gone already. Did we know that? Oh, well, as of Thursday, Paul and Mary did not know that. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. We built the demo permit. Okay, well, the building's gone, so the rest will be a parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> we have sign permits, too, so there'll be signs of sign. Here. Sure. 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 Okay. We have a motion to open second. the door. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Yes, sir. Ron Smith's 3777, <coughs> Mighty Oak Drive. <clears throat> so we mailed out uh, over 100 letters to uh, the neighbors and the uh, other commercial properties in our area with uh, all pos positive feedback. We uh, met with the planners on uh, July 9th. We went to the uh, council meeting on uh, July 17th. We've got uh, positive feedback back from the Whitney Park Association, Rick Trank, uh, Camera Corner. Red Lewis, PDQ Car Washes, Nathan Lard Noise, Riverside Welding, Glenn, Glenn Sanderson, Sanderson Photography. Um, going to C2 will make the whole block uh, uniform use. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Looks good. Move to return to regular business. Second. We have a motion and a second to return the regular order of business. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. I move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the recommendation. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Aye. 
Yes. Thanks, guys. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Item six. Consideration with possible action on the request to authorize a conditional use permit to all permit a two-family dwelling in the office residential district at 225 North Ashland Avenue, submitted by Sandy Markowitz, Corporate Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, this is a lot, uh, 225 North Ashland. It sits about on the west side of Ashland, about halfway between Hubbard and Delsman. So it's also was built in 1900. Um, it had historically been used as a two-family. Don't know if it was built that way or had been converted at some time in the past. We're assuming it was built as a single and converted at some point to a two-family. Um, in the office residential district, a single or a two-family are both conditional uses. So it was a grandfathered use um, or a legal non-conforming use. I shouldn't use grandfathered, a uh, legal non-conforming use. Um, it had gone through some <coughs> structural issues in the recent past um, and some sanitation issues and was subsequently uh, sold a couple times, used as a single family home for greater than 12 months, so it lost that nonconformity. So it became, um, even though still designed as a two family home, became a single family in allowed use. Um, Subsequently, the, some of the issues, some of the structural issues, sanitation issues, did not get cleaned up on the site. The current owner sold it, or is selling it, it's pending, um, to the petitioner. The petitioner uh, cover rentals, uh, own a lot of rental properties. Uh, they're interested in purchasing this, uh, rehabbing it, and converting it, or reestablishing the two-family use. It's not really a conversion. Um, so you can see the zoning, or excuse me, the future land use shows low medium density housing. Zoning is office uh, residential and everything to the west is, is low density uh, residential. Uh, and this is the site itself a little up close. Uh, the big thing with two families, again, they're conditional use permits and if you remember from Act 67, all the conditional uses, if they can meet the conditions, uh, generally good to go. Um, the big thing with two family uses, and in this case even the single, is our city code requires covered parking. So a two family has to have two covered stalls at least, a single family has to have one covered stall. Uh, this site has operated for years with just the driveway and slab from the previous garage that was on there. Met with the petitioners, let them know that. Um, they came back with this uh, site plan showing a 24 by 24 uh, foot garage off of the alleyway that is behind the house, so there's no driveway leading to the street. We hold two cars plus um, in the garage, and it's not quite to scale. There is enough room behind it to park a car in the driveway as well. Um, so they would be meeting that condition. Um, so with that, we are recommending approval of the request for a conditional use permit for a two-family use. Um, compliance with all regulations of municipal code not covered. Um, that they submit a site plan establishing minimum parking compliance and compliance with the uniform dwelling code for two family uses. Thank you. Move to open the floor. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to open the floor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anybody wishing to speak on this? I'll speak on it. Okay. I was hoping you would. All right. <laughs> so, I am so long. Long. we appreciate that. I am a member of Cover Rentals, also one of the owners of the um, proposed home here. Mm -hmm. So, I um, wanted to tell you a little bit about our company. My husband and I own the company with my son and his wife. We own several rentals in Green Bay. Um, 100 plus units, and then we have a baby company that my son owns along with 20 plus units. Um, a little bit about our company, I had the pleasure of meeting David through this process. Um, one thing uniquely we do about um, our company is, I so dislike slum landlords. Um, one thing we do with all of our multi-units, I, I get why the city of Green Bay likes the covered uh, parking areas, and that is because uh, a lot of landlords, um, 
do not take care of the properties as far as keeping the outdoor elements covered. And the one thing we do is none of our multi-units are required of our tenants to take care of the properties. So we have a hired individual who does all of our lawn care. We have a hired individual who does all of our snow removal. And with that being said, one of these nice folders is all of his um, documentation. So he's required weekly to come in, hand in his information to me that he has on record. We also keep that informed with our insurance company. So we give that documentation to our insurance company. All that is kept on record with them also that that is done in all of our multifamily properties. Um, our single families are required to do it themselves. So how do we keep track of that to make sure that's all done? We have an individual hired who is a retired man and he drives by all of our properties. And he goes every three weeks and he keeps a running log, which I have one of these folders too. And then he comes into my office and he has a running form and he um, babysits them. So that can be anywhere from, it can be a soffit hanging, it can be a repeated bike lane in the yard, it can be we're in no pet facility, but if we buy a unit and they have a pet in it, they can keep that pet till that pet's gone, but no more pets can enter. Um, so it can be a dog digging holes in the yard, it can be any one of those things. But he runs, uh, he, he takes care of a running log and he will, you know, either check out the property as being clean or he will check it off as a uh, car being untagged, uh, pellets laying against a garage, um, if it's a single family, lawn, looking long, um, you know, so forth, so forth, so forth. So that's how we watch all of our properties. Um, I work with ICS Housing. I also work with a couple other agencies. I'm very particular who I put in my homes. I watch my homes very close. So when I work with ICS, um, both mics can testify that when they go in and they do my inspections, typically I always pass my very first inspections. Um, I have another individual hired and he goes uh, two nights a week and always every Saturday. He checks my homes before the inspectors go through. Very easy inspections for the housing agencies here in Green Bay. They should be what every home should have. They're not asking a lot. They're asking for floorings to pass, refrigerators being working orders, smoke detectors, carbon monoxide extensions. But we have forms that, um, you know, right here, that, oops, on the floor now, that my fellow goes through and um, he has this checklist right here. Thank you. He has this checklist right here that he goes through. Thanks, David. And um, goes through and and goes through week before those inspectors go through. And if anything is found, he's required to take a picture. Takes a picture, comes back, and then that is identified. Um, if they, if there's ever anything in my units that becomes too big for this part-time maintenance man I have, we own our own construction company. It's also an LLC company, so it is um, all um, legit, legal. So our uh, construction company, we then further on the forms, and the forms go to our construction company, and they are uh, placed within that. The forms filled out, and then it may be big projects, you know, uh, something too big that my maintenance man couldn't, couldn't have done that goes on to uh, a bigger desk and then that's filed and then it is taken care of you know such as you know maybe there's a leak in a roof or uh, there's a huge window that needs to be replaced or something that goes on to the construction company so we have a very tight uniform structured company that's ran so that our rentals are you know appealable to live by that neighbors want to live by that neighbors want to be by um, you know we want Green Bay to be the community that people want to you know live in rent in and live next to you know that's that's just what our goal is as owning renters you know owning rentals in, in Green Bay we own them in Menominee Michigan we also own some in Manitowoc um, you know, we even have a running log on our trees. You know, this is our table full of trees, trees that are leaning, trees that are falling. And we, you know, keep in close contact with WPS. They have that four-year program going on where they're, you know, taking out certain trees and we're always on their charts. You know, what neighborhood are you in? What trees are you gonna cover of ours? And which ones won't you cover? So we, we're just always working very tight within the community to make sure all of our properties are, you know, uh, doing what we're supposed to do. And, you know, we're human, some things can get behind, sometimes our, our schedules can get tight, but, you know, I, I've heard a couple neighbors are a little concerned on it going back to, you know, multifamily, but 
And actually, I think I'd rather be neighbors with my multifamily than maybe with a single family buying it because we are babysitting that property so close, making sure, and plus we are the people who are cutting the lawn and removing the snow and checking windows and checking fences and checking you know decks and checking all of that to make sure there's done. Uh, and we just purchased a property about two months ago on Smith Street. And uh, when we bought the property, it you know got a non-compliance right away from the previous people who had it, you know, and I brought it with me and the non-compliance was, you know, that the garage needed to be completely repainted and, you know, um, I just wanted, you know, in factual to show how, you know, how, how that was handled. The notice was immediately sent to the people living there that, you know, lived in the home when we purchased it and within, you know, by August 3rd, the notice was sent to them. We would be coming, we would be, you know, peeling the paint off and it will be repainted. Uh, drive by Smith C Street, that was done. You know, it was all done within the non compliance time. So we follow our non compliances as close as we can. If not, we work with our folks in the city of Green Bay and let them know hey, we're running behind because of this or that, or we ran into this or that issue with it. So that's the company we are. That's who we try to be. You know, we ask to work with you guys. You work with us. Um, you know, we um, hope to be able to have. A lot of rentals in this town because we hope you know that that's if, if there, there's going to always be that population and those rentals and we hope that um, that's who's going to reflect the city of Green Bay and that that's the type of um, landlords and investors we're going to have versus what some of them are there and that's a lot of the rentals that we are buying is from a lot of investors who we just shrug our shoulders and just are almost I cannot believe some of the places we go into that we purchase. We just are on, we, oh, I just can't believe it sometimes when I walk in and I think, who would ever expect somebody to live in some of these conditions? And those are a lot of them we pick up and buy. And then we go through, do our magic, and have it done. This property in particular, well, I can tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go in, we're going to replaster, re drywall, we repaint, put a new flooring. Uh, I believe the new windows were on the list. I actually have not gone through this property completely. T uh, Taylor goes through and my son goes through and he buys these and, and then I get through them after they're all purchased. Um, the garage will be put up within the year. Um, if the year need, if the roof needs to be replaced, that'll be done within five to ten years. You know, usually we look at that within the five to ten year plan. The deck, I believe, is being replaced and the new deck is being put on. All chipping paints always removed right away and re put back up. Um, so there'll be new flooring, new painting. Uh, uh, cabinets, we always take out cabinets, replace cabinets. Um, pretty much we just go in, that everything in there will be new. That that will be completely tore out, revamped, and everything will be new. Um, so that will be what will be done. I believe the downstairs is going to be a three bedroom. I already have the downstairs rented out. And the upstairs, um, I think, is a two will be a two bedroom. It's, I think is existing. I think we're gonna it'll be kept as a two bedroom. Um, downstairs, I had a waiting list for three or four families on a three bedroom, and um, very tight screening on it because it's going to be all brand new in there. And I, not that it won't be tight screening anyhow, but I, I wanted to, uh, I wanted particular folks in there because. Um, uh, I knew this neighborhood was really worried about who was going to go in there, so I was looking very cautiously um, on my waiting list. I have a huge waiting list for people to rent, so I have downstairs rented already. They're waiting. <laughs> if all goes through. Um, Brian Johnson, Alderman for this district. Um, David has been very helpful um, with giving me some background information on this uh, for which I could uh, take that and reply to some of the uh, residents in the neighborhood who had reached out to me. So thank you, David, for your help on that. And um, one final question I did get, though, however, that I didn't get a chance to connect with David that just kind of uh, came in a couple hours ago, which, by the way, you guys have managed to outlast protection welfare. So <laughs> congratulations. Um, Okay. But I just wanted to be able to at least have this answered before a vote was, was taken on it. And I think I know the answer, but I'd like you just to confirm that for me. So um, how many complaints or resources by community law enforcement are registered against rental units versus homeowners in the Fort Howard neighborhood? Um, and should this not be taken into account before further uh, expanding rental units in a neighborhood such as ours? And so David, I think that this is considered sort of that judgment clause that Act 67 legally would not 
um, even allow us to tackle that issue because they can meet the CUP requirements and so therefore it's kind of a moot point, right? Correct. Um, and we do take into account previous um, actions on the site, however, in this case it's being purchased by a new owner. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, but yes, you're correct. Act 67, if, if it's a conditional use in the district, you meet the requirements. Um, and we can't prove that there's a, going to be a negative impact. Um, yeah, it's generally approvable. Okay. It wasn't that long ago we went through that. Yep, yep. and that's all I needed you to corroborate that that, that was exactly uh, what I responded with. But, um, and again, I just wanted to confirm it at least because we hadn't had a chance to speak beforehand. So uh, I also want to say that uh, I did, uh, Sandy did call me back today and we had a great conversation and uh, I'm actually excited, excited to see the improvements uh, that they're gonna make in this property. I think this property historically uh, has been neglected and so to have someone who's gonna come in and take care of it and maintain it in a way that, uh, to your point, not every homeowner will even do. And, and so to me, the, the rental versus homeownership thing is, is really irrelevant and, and uh, I think it's about how that property is maintained is what the real concern is of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And so uh, given your testimony, I think, uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that the neighbors will, will agree with that and be excited to see some of the improvements uh, uh, that you're bringing in and hopefully uh, meet their new neighbors soon, so. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Does anybody Richard. else wish to speak on this? Okay. Very nice. Move to return to regular order of business. Okay. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Motion to regular order of business. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Any further discussion? Move to approve. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve the recommendation. Any further discussion? Here I would have. note that I wish you had brought some of your, the neighbors of some of your other properties in to tell us how much they like being next to your property because we do hear a lot from people who are concerned about rentals. And I wish more people followed the protocol you described. We oh, appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Not a hard thing to do. It should be your neighbor, my neighbor too. Correct? <laughs> should be how we all live. Okay. Uh, would you all please go? Aye. <laughs> For Purchase <laughs> better. Unanimously approved. Thank you. Okay. Great. Let's go to the next council meeting. Item 8, consideration so with possible action and a request to approve a path right of way yeah. for Sitka Street and Superior Road submitted by the Improvement and Services Committee. Thank you. As always, I'd like to thank Tom Giesi for coming to these meetings and sitting until the very end because he's always at the bottom of the agenda. <laughs> uh, this was referred from INS on July 11th. This is for a reconstruction project along Sitka. So this is on the East Side of 143. This is Superior here in Ontario with the whole of the work being done along Sitka here and then a little bit along Superior Road. Um, so there are no official map amendments required for this as the road rate will be staying the same, but there are some new easements that we need for construction purposes and then also for the permanent roadway. Um, so with that, if you have any questions regarding this, Tom is here to answer them, but it's a basic reconstruction project for some future uh, residential development. So with that, we're requesting approval of the request. Could you go back to the map? And I understood the whole notion about widening the roads. I'm curious about the little L-shaped two pieces up in the upper left corner. That I did not yes. fully understand. Uh, there's some stormwater management facilities in that part of it. So we would have the easement area over that to get access to it, basically. Okay, thank you. So anything you can see that would be not on the road is basically for a stormwater facility. Thank you. Oh, I'll just make that up. Did you need to speak or? Only if you have questions. Are there any questions? If not, I would entertain a motion. Two. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion? Very none. I will ask that you vote. Or not. Or in the world. Aye. Yes. 
Okay. Yes, for me too. All right. Unanimously approved. Thank you. Thanks for waiting, Tom. You bet. Okay. okay, next, the annual update on land divisions. <coughs> this is the most riveting part of your night, I know. Um, so, as you are aware, the Planning Commission allows our staff to do the approvals of these. So, every year we come in and show you what we've done in the past year, basically, how many lots we've created. So the first one is Preserve, which is phase four. This was one of the fastest growing subdivisions that we had in the city. They did phases two, three, four, basically back to back because they couldn't keep up with the amount of homes that would be requested of them. So this is the last one for this subdivision. Um, this is in our pre-final state right now, so it should be completed fairly quickly and it's creating 14 new single family lots. The next one is Pine Acres Estates. This is probably the only one we've done on the west side of town in a very long time. This is Packerland Drive here, and Hazelwood to give you some perspective of where this is at. So this road will be continuing through to go up. That one is uh, completed. It's ready to go whenever they're ready, and it's creating 27 new single family lots. The next one is Logger Ridge Estates First Edition. Um, this is completed pre-final, uh, final date to be anticipated. They're having some issues with the infrastructure out there but this will create 19 new lots in this area. The next one is for the rail yard, which is the Larson Green property. Um, this one we're working through a couple kinks with, but there'll be some condos, apartments, commercial, pretty much anything you can think of. It'll be a very mixed use area. Um, this is in pre-final review right now, and at our next meeting, we will have an application for the street vacation and the PUD that go along with this plan. So that should all be wrapping up this fall for completion. Next one is a set of condos. So this is for Balin Heights. Um, to use some perspective, this it is Bay Settlement Road. So that's what Huron in town, Humboldt. Yeah. I always get confused which ones are. Okay, this one's Humboldt. This one's Huron. Um, so this is a built-up subdivision already. There's another plot that's been approved here that's ready to go. And then this area would be condo. This one's commercial. So for the condo area, they're approving six units along this strip here, and then with an additional expansion area that's allowed. Um, that one is in pre-final review as well, so it should be ready to go in the next 30 days. And then the last one is the reconfiguration of an already existing condo area. This is for uh, Baird Crossing condos. So they had originally submitted their plat years ago, and they reconfigured some of the new um, building designs. So with the addition of that, we have them do the replatting. So this isn't necessarily giving us any new lots, but it's reconfiguring their, the land that they've already done for this. So they're building pretty quickly. I usually bought a building a year that they do for the condos there. And that's everything. Thank you. Directors are going. Right. They're back at 6.04. You didn't notice. So our renovation on this floor is 95% complete. Uh, there's a few furnishings, fixtures. Uh, we just got to work out yet. Um, but once that's done, we'll be having an open house up here. Uh, by commission member, public. Um, yeah, that's what we've done in terms of improvement, safety, security, um, customer service is a big thing. So there's only one counter uh, to which the public needs to go to for payments, permits in the future right now. Uh, and then also on the back side, uh, our work in our workspaces, uh, we've created a pretty cool environment and then hopefully that will help us be more effective, efficient, and uh, retaining and recruiting talent up here on this floor. Um, so for the uh, other stuff, uh, council, um, at the last meeting in July, uh, we had three ordinances uh, up for their last reading. One was the PUD for military and western, that was the Martin. Uh, expansion was approved. Um, also, the uh, PUD for 865 Lombardi, uh, the Ad Amendment for Time to Lunch sign was approved. Uh, and then the ordinance regarding, we talked about tonight, it went with um, PUDs and then just some things that we had to do for state statute uh, to be in compliance. Uh, that was also approved. And then, as far as the report, um, all those items on that last report, uh, some things we talked about tonight. Uh, changing the comp plan for uh, Main Street, Pine Street for the nearly new auto expansion, uh, the CUP, I'm sorry, uh, changing the uh, car wash, uh, the, that piece oh, yes. in terms of, yes, uh, back and forth with that, uh, um, 
the CUP for. Uh, I'm sorry, what happened with that? So the plan, plan commission's recommendation was upheld, and that is we. The approval of subject to working out with the oh, solution the acceptable to the traffic city traffic engineer. Okay. I think it was what the final language was. Okay. So that still has to be okay. go through the process okay. yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yes, Thank I believe you. that was the final recommendation that came out of our meeting here. Um, the CUP on, on Howard Street, the CUP for St. John's, the CUP um, for uh, another shelter facility um, on Christiana Street. Um, that was the one for House of Hope and their expansion mm -hmm. over there. Um, PUD for Great Court, um, which is up off of Vell. Uh, the ordinance for historic preservation, uh, which will have its third reading mm -hmm. next week. Um, mm -hmm. And then a PUD for the turn block of Earth and Buren Street, uh, which is uh, uh, working on uh, Winnie Park townhomes. So, um, and then the, the special meeting, uh, I'm sorry, that was the special meeting we had. Uh, it's been busy. Yes. <laughs> 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 Is the Historical Preservation Commission stuff getting well received? So I'll let you answer <laughs> how that's been. I, I, I think. Um, Any it's predictions? Been quiet. It's been it's quiet. Yeah. Generally supportive. Yeah. Like a couple people adamantly oppose, which we anticipated, but mm -hmm. we have a lot of support. So Good. I'm hoping that it gets approved, and then we'll have a new landmarks commission. Yes. Oh, cool. Which will be very fun. So I'm down. Thank you. And the date of the next meeting? So the next scheduled meeting is September 10th, but it looks like we will be having a meeting in two weeks. August um, I think we've got a quorum that will most likely uh, focus on the rail yard. Um, we've got two items. One is a PUD for the area north of Kellogg, and then the other one, uh, which I'm just talked about, um, is the plat and the vacations um, for some street right away. Um, figure we take those together, and, and in terms of again, you know, timing moving some things along, uh, also because it's such a big project and big area, kind of warrants some discussion on its own. Okay. So we're playing that for Monday, the twenty seventh. Okay. Thank you. I move to adjourn. I second that. Okay, maybe a motion and a second to adjourn. <laughs> Any further discussion? I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned.